So, uh, hi, welcome, friends, to uh, Occultus Anonymous uh, Holiday Special. Holiday Party. Yeah, yeah. Holiday Party. I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah nothing we're particularly. Close to normal business to, for an employee gathering. Yep. <laughs> we we hanging out, having a good old time. Uh, uh, yeah, sponsored by Roll20, not the Onyx Path, because this isn't their stuff. Um, and patrons like you guys. Uh, thank you very much to our patrons who support us monetarily, and uh, it uh, it means a lot. It 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 really is. I, I talked about it while I was up at PAX. I talked about you guys a, a lot, um, and uh, well, I talked specifically because it's like it's really weird, guys. Go start stuff. If you if people like it, they will give you money. It's really weird, but people will do it. So. Uh, special shout outs to Adele, Al, Alexander, Angfoth, Bernie, Buck, Chris, Clara, Daniel, Doc the Undead, Doggo Deloon, Emil, Fudzusu Raleigh, George, Guardians of the Veil, other articles guarded separately, Icy Hot Twins, Jack, <laughs> Jack, uh, Jenny, John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith, uh, who has started because that's not one of our, our regular ones. Oh, Lord. Uh, John, Josh, Julian, Catfeathers, Crazy Man 1772, Michael, Milo V3, Ms. Grumpy, Moku, Mozart D minor, Noba, Other Michael, Perry, Puppeteer, Ralph's sil- Silky Smooth Sexy Voice, Oh Yeah, R- Riafio, Ryan, Shane, Shaksara, Taryn, Thomas, Toast, Usuf, Selma, Vortex, and Zoltan. Thank you all for your support and uh, for the uh, knuckleheads out there. Uh, thank you for not crossing any weird line that makes me stop our silly game. Uh, <laughs> because I know some of you would. Um, so... Uh, but yes, thank you all uh, for your support. Uh, we are playing Kids on Bikes. Nope. Kids on Brooms right. tonight. It is a modification expansion, however you want to look at it, of Kids on Brooms. Um, nope. Kids on Bikes. Um, there's also Teens in Space. And for those of you. We who, need a ding every time he makes. A dude, mistake. I know. It's fine. We won't be talking about bikes and uh, much more. Uh, but for those of you who want to get really out there with your uh, expansions, there is Dads on Mowers. Just saying, if you need some one shot material, this is the stuff for you. Uh, is that a King of the Hill game? It, it straight up yes. looks like it with with the I mean, it's got a dad T-shirt tucked into jeans belt. You know, ankle socks, Incredible. New Balance. Yeah, it's the just, it's the whole thing. It just makes me think of the live show that the Adventure Zone did, where they, the Dadlands, like, the, the Dadlands, where it was like post apocalyptic. Only dads were left. Oh god! And there were like tribes of dads, like the Grill Dads and the the Vacation Dads, and it was fucking incredible. Thank you. That's that's what I needed to know. I needed to know that that was out there. So, but no, we are getting magical as fuck up here. Uh, I hope you all have your wands handy because I have mine. There, I didn't get it. <laughs> um, I don't think I can reach it either. It's on top of my bookshelf. <laughs> oh no! Um, you have permission in there, you. So I'm only playing pretend. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, we're gonna have some fun with this. Um, uh, as just a aside about the system itself, the game is very accessible. It's cheap. And is very, very good one shot fodder um, because it literally starts with create characters, which takes you about five minutes and then create your magical school, which takes about five minutes. That said, if you're a group like this group, um, it's been an hour and a half. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a bit. Um, I did play it at PAX. Uh, I did run it at PAX Unplugged and people jumped into it and it took us 30 minutes to go over rules and get characters created. And it just flew. Uh, so if you're the forever DM or somebody's missing that day or whatever, and you want a game to play, I highly suggest Kids on Brooms, Kids on Bikes, uh, Teens in Space is is the trio of them. Very, very good to just pick up and go. And they're good for one shots. And then they do have some special rules for like, oh, do you want to keep playing? Here's how you get XP, which um, we already went into, which is what classes are you taking this semester? Uh, because, you know, of course we did. Uh, so um, let's start with everybody kind of introducing their characters real quick and your tropes. Uh, I had a couple people reach out and go, I bet I know what tropes so and so is playing. And I was thoroughly amused at how wrong people were. Because <laughs> um. I talked to Amanda, who knows everybody here, and she was wrong, which she she gave me a look. Are you serious? I said, 
yes, and I'm very excited for this. Yeah, it's gonna be a wild, wild thing. Um, so when we were originally gonna play this, uh, Ash was not gonna be here. Mm -hmm. I was like, well. I'll fill in some of the Ash vibes for the night. And so I created the character that I'll be playing. Which is, uh, her name is Priscilla Ashburn. Um, she is the withdrawn bookworm as the trope. Um, she's uh, 15. She's got a little bit of like a Wednesday Adams sort of vibe going on, but not as like mean and cold. And a little bit more withdrawn. She's got uh, dark green dyed hair. Um, straight across bangs straight down a uh, long hair um she's an underclassman yeah, which for us is uh 13 to i think we said 13 to 15 14 14 yeah. 15 yeah um and uh do i do like oh yeah, yeah just let's go over all of it yeah just to, yeah. to talk it uh out. her broom is a fast broom it's the bolting 4000 um and her wand is made of birch with an owl's feather core. And her familiar is a Virginia opossum named Bean. And he likes hanging out in her uh, designer bag. Snuggled up. Uh, yeah, which, by the way, your her. school bag is a very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Where you carry your actual items and your baggage. Uh, yep. Um, let's see. Oh, and she's I, good at potions. Yep. And uh, if you want to go over your strengths and trope questions. Ah, yes. Um, so strength, uh, because I'm an underclassman, I have innocence, which means that I can get out of trouble with adults. I have uh, trained in potions. Um, so for potion based magic, I will have a little bonus to that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have easy going. Um, get two adversity tokens when I fail a check. Yep. Um, Which I don't. I, somebody will have to. Oh, wait. Adversity tokens are on your sheet. Yeah. Okay, cool. So mm -hmm. that's easy. Uh, oh, which does remind me because I was looking at Ash, your sheet, because I know you you put yourself as just trained in uh, fight, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. Basically, look into a school. Uh, or one of the classes and the the skills that are related to that would be the ones that you were trained in. Um, so yeah, it's I'm not necessarily one attribute. The, if there was like a list of those anywhere. Uh, yeah, there was, but I lost what page it was on. Yeah, I can find it real quick. Yeah, all I could see was like the because like each each like stats. traditional magic class has like three stats tied to it. Yeah, it's uh, 37 in the PDF. Uh, the, yeah. Then my my trope questions are, why do you love studying by yourself? It's quiet and I can fo focus on learning what I'm interested in most. So I'm I'm actively trying to not be the, you know, the bushy haired one from the books. Um, I, I don't think she's. Like, like, yes, she is smart. Yes, she has the brains, but that's not her like totally defining attribute. And there's, I think, maybe going to be some crossover because, like, I had her kind of set up as a sort of uh, maybe not famous parents, but wealthy parents for sure. And, like, expected to do well and coming from a lineage and whatnot. But that's not sort of the main part of her character. Um, and then how have your recent attempts to spend time with others backfired? Uh, I said my recent forays into the Thunderdome proved quite literally painful. <laughs> We will go over the Thunderdome later. <laughs> um, oh, uh, also uh, just because laws are oh, go ahead. conspicuous. Okay. Um, basically, based off her style and how she dresses and makeup and all that, uh, and timid. Uh, and just for those following along at home, uh, Kids on Brooms uses flaws and fears. Um, uh, well, I, no, excuse me. Kids on Bikes technically uses flaws. Kids on Brooms uses fears. I'm not worried about the mechanic differences and stuff like that, just because this is a one shot and we're not going to delve too deeply into anybody's character. But I'm scared good, of bees. Yeah, they're, they're good for role play stuff. Um, and then uh, there's something else. Da, 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 da. Um, no, oh, whatever it was. Oh, yes. Sorry. The elephant in the room. Uh, Ruff isn't here currently. He should be joining us uh, midway into the, the session. Not in the room. Yes. The elephant not in the room. That's fair. 
Uh, so thank you, Priscilla. Uh, let's go have uh, antimony. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, Antimony Inkart uh, is the offbeat eccentric. Uh, she's very young. Uh, she's only 13. Um, but has sort of a worldly kind of air to her. Like she's seen, she seen some shit. Um, she has a bolting 4000, which is a matching nice little. Brooms. Hey, matching yeah. brooms. Nice. Um, and a Hawthorne and Lion main wand. And she has a familiar, uh, a tarantula named Bunny. Which I, I should note, is, is it one of the little pink toed tarantulas? No, this is a black gnarly tarantula. Nice. Yeah, pale skin, platinum blonde hair. Yeah. Um, her strengths are innocence, because she's a uh, under classroom. Um, and um, from her background and stuff, she's unassuming, which it's easy for people to ignore her or just not notice her. And uh, easygoing, so she can gain adversity tokens when she fails checks. And then your trope questions. Um, so what do you believe that no one else does that the dead can communicate with us? Like we can actually talk to them and hang out and that kind of stuff. Um, outside of like a ghost thing, outside of a haunting, that kind of thing. Um, and what would it mean to find somebody who believes the same thing she does? It'd be like she would assume that they're instant best friends. Good really stuff. branching out here. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then Haley Abercrombie. I am playing the haughty descendant. Um, she is 16, an um, upperclassman, but like barely. Mm -hmm. uh, she's from a long line of renowned athletes and their wizard sport, their trophies and plaques are all over the school. And it's a lot to live up to, considering that she is herself not an athlete. Oh no. Um, so she sort of compensates for that by just like trying to be really good at everything else. Uh, appearance wise, um, basically like a cross between Elle Woods and Cher from Clueless. Yeah, I saw that pin board today. I was like, oh, this is going to be good. Yeah. Dressing like exclusively in like pleated skirts and blazers. Mm -hmm. uh, her familiar is a black Devon Rex cap named Ichabod, who is almost always wearing a fancy cashmere sweater because he will get cold. Her broom is the Daring Dodger 3000. It is, uh, its mechanical effect is each diversity token spent during a check gives me plus two instead of plus one. Mm -hmm. While you're flying. And its appearance, uh, redwood polished to a mirror shine. It has cell phone charms hanging on the end of it. <laughs> Love that. Because of course. Because of course it does. Uh, her, her wand is uh, lilac with an iron core. Cool. What are those two, by the way? Uh, lilac is plus charm. one to charm, and iron is for fight. Nice. Well, what does Antimony look like? And you said blonde. Oh, okay. I'm just... Yeah, the pale, uh, pale skin. Almost white blonde hair. hair. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, her strengths: she has a tick trained in defense against malicious magic. Um. Yeah, so that it... would be uh, fight, flight, and grip. Um. Okay, it gives me three things. Mm -hmm. Um, intuitive. Just spend one diversity token to ask about something and you'll tell me because she can pick up on things and prepared just been two tokens to have a commonplace item just have it the mary poppins bag it's so good yes uh i really like um i knew what i was seeing in my head is what her bag was going to be so i went searching for like like a messenger briefcase and the first one i found was a burberry one i'm like oh this is perfect yep Hey, trip questions. Oh, yeah. What famous or infamous thing is your family known for in the magical world? Long line of athletes. Like everything is loaded with their names. Uh, why are you afraid you won't be able to look for the reputation? She is not an athlete. <laughs> yep. 
Though she she got some fight in her, though. I noticed that when yes. I was looking at the stats. Um, yeah, basically happened is she's she's very talented at like curses and hexes. Um, really good at offensive magic. Oh, not so great on the grit and brawn, like, though. Can't take a yeah. punch. No, she's not like physically strong at all. But like when she hits you with a spell, you know you've been hit. I like that. Fight and brawn are two separate stats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, fight is far more about the the skill and ability to hurt somebody, and brawn is moving stuff or taking a hit. Uh, if you get into a fist fight, um, cool. So those are our characters. We'll have Ralph uh, introduce his uh, when he arrives. And somewhere I accidentally minimized aha the school info. Uh, so this is another thing that uh, we've we had gone over previously. Um, off stream just to go ahead and prep some of this um and feel free ash to uh chime in on this i it this handout should be visible to you so um you can follow along a little bit easier but if there's any uh additions please feel free to throw them in uh but yes the school's name is chiron's conservatory of might and magic uh located in rural new england uh the head of the school is named chiron he is a centaur, and he's best known for maybe being the original Chiron. Uh, one of the uh, school's favorite pastimes is a magical combination of lacrosse and gravity magic, which uh, abuses the crap out of me because at Philadelphia, the one shot was also um, lacrosse with gravity magic. And I'm like, how did this? OK, fine. Sure. It just uh, makes sense. It just makes sense. It does. I mean, if you're going to because we, we came up with the idea of, to have it like upper crusty like upper elite crust new england ivy school. league new england yeah. magic school and i was like the school sports gotta be lacrosse uh, right no it's not just quidditch because it's inside of a cube also yep. quidditch is like soccer mm -hmm. yeah and there's no brooms yeah no brooms you gotta you gotta you gotta put this on your on, you know put you put this on your feet do this on your feet excuse me mm -hmm. yep uh um, very much blitzball was in my head when we were talking about it yep um notable landmarks in the school is chiron's grove a magical place that grows impossible plants including a massive man-eating flower surrounded by warning signs um there's also locker 42 where all lost items in the school eventually end up um good luck finding the thing which at, at, once we invented this i was like oh that's actually in that other one but who cares uh uh another oh yes another landmark outside of the school is a guy in a like stylized pimped out wizard, wizard van thing. parked outside the gates is he a wizard no does he know what he's parked next to no <laughs> yeah he just doesn't know why he's there or what's going on and he he's doesn't just, care yeah. he's just hanging out um and Selling then the students <laughs> Yep. Um, then another uh, landmark is the sprawling underground cave and tunnel system that has never been successfully mapped because every time it seems to be shifting and moving. Uh, one of the mm -hmm. unconventional classes. OK, I'm going to note this one was Ralph's. Uh, yep. One of the most unconventional classes we have uh, at school is home ec, but it's frequently referred to by students as no more poop class. Um, how to use your magic for very practical and helpful uh, things throughout the home and in your daily life without causing yourself harm. Right. Um, another one is arcane implements and sorcerer's sword play. Uh, all students are told not to abbreviate it because it's a a s s. Um, but of course, everyone just calls it ass. Anyways, um, and then um, some of the various um, rumors in history, which is one of the really cool aspects and this is this is hugely where you'll get your players coming up with all sorts of bullshit um is the uh, our witches and wizards were trained well enough to not be caught in the salem witch trials rumor about rumors abound that the school is built on an ancient necropolis it is an open secret that there are a number of secret societies within the school which then kind of filter out into the real world uh but the exact number and composition of these societies is unknown uh, almost everybody is in some secret society, maybe even multiple. Just depends on if you can maintain all those various loyalties. Um, other rumors 
Um, oh, excuse me. No, this is facts. Um, Chiron seems sickly, and that is absolutely unheard of, especially when you have his magical grove where he can grow impossible plants. How is he sick? Uh, the school is now accepting exchange students from a sister school, which is, again, weird and new. And then uh, one of the darker secret societies has completely imploded, revealing names of all their graduated members worldwide. Uh, and so that's a bunch of stuff that uh, players and I came up with. Um, I don't know if Ash has any other things that she wants to throw into the mix here. Not that I can really think of. Right. And it's also kind of weird to come at it like after a bunch of stuff. Yeah, when it's all been written up. Yeah. Um, and then we do have a school schedule uh, that will go over briefly, uh, at least for our, our uh, students here. So uh, let's see. We have Craig, uh, excuse me, uh, and Timothy has uh, Transfiguration with Miss uh, Zendoba, followed by Numerology, followed by Hexes and Charms Club. Um, and then um, both uh, Antimony and Priscilla have Potions with Professor Farbridge. Um, and then let's see here. Oh no, all three of you have potions yeah. with Professor Farmbridge on Tuesday and Thursday. It would be easiest to have like some that were together. <laughs> oh sure, yeah. Um, uh, that's right. And Haley and Priscilla have ass Mondays and Wednesdays together. Um, let's see what else we have in here. Um, oh right. Um, Haley is taking history of magic on Fridays. What kind of monster is she? But okay, whatever. It's uh, in the morning. Yeah, you know, in the morning. Well, so. is like the, it's a one day a week class, so it goes all day. Yep. Ugh. Uh, Yikes. And then for extracurricular stuff, yeah, we met at the Hexes and Charms Club for Intimini. Um, Haley is in yearbook and SGA, student government. Uh, She's class rep. Yep. Um, uh, uh, Priscilla has Thunderdome on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, and yep. then uh, for night classes, nobody actually has a night class, but are those supposed to be classes? Technically, mo the morning, afternoon, and night are classes. Extracurricular is just right there, but I mean, because we don't care, why, you know. Um, so for night classes, whatever. Um, Antimity has Necropolis Club on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then uh, Haley has Dueling Club on Wednesdays. So um, and it, is any of that important or mechanical? No, but it's fun. Um, no, and I like the idea of the of a Dueling Club being like not quite sanctioned, like almost a fight club. That's why it's at night. Yeah. You just, um, like sneak out of your dorm and go fight yeah there is um and, and something to bring up uh now and also uh yeah i want to go to this school that is literally 90 percent of the reason to play this game uh mm -hmm. make the wizard school that you want to go to uh also should should be noted there's a sign outside of the school as you walk up that says no turfs no nazis no racists it's weird it's it's there no nobody it knows like you wouldn't need it you but wouldn't you need know that right but you know <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah uh it does mention there is one yeah weirdly specific um uh, there is one thing to note which is that um there is a um i can't remember the name of the council who basically hunt you down if you use magic on other people um so 90 percent of the magic that is performed in the in the game is supposed to be on the environment and on objects around you so duels uh while they do happen and they do mention them in the book um are supposed to be um like sanctioned and sh teachers put up wards and stuff like that because you need to prep and prepare in case something happens uh so yeah dueling club is probably not a fight club thing um but it does call out and this is more of a um storyteller device but yeah, if you cast magic on somebody else, somebody will come investigating because they know. And unlike in like Harry Potter, where it's like, oh, you can even cast magic without a wand. Now, in this system, straight up, somebody can show up and be like, uh, we're taking you in judge, jury, and we're not executing you. We're just literally taking away your ability to cast magic. That's it, uh, which is a very nice thing. Um, and Perry, you probably have a 
good point. The dueling club actually may actually be sabers and entirely non-magical. It may be all the 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 might the sword part play. of might and magic. Yeah, the sorcerer sword play. Yeah, uh, that's very fair. Um, so yes, um, and yes, it, it is kind of like the guardians, but um, guardians can't take away your ability to cast magic. Well, I guess if they take your soul. And they can kill you. <laughs> yeah. They can kill you. They yeah. can just kill you. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah. So that is uh, w- welcome to Chiron's Conservatory of Might and Magic. Uh, shortened down to Chum. Uh, right? Or Calm, I guess. But you know, everyone does the CH for Chiron. Think- I don't think the school would appreciate being initialized like that. No, probably not. Uh, yeah. No, no conservatory of might and magic. Not, yeah. I don't know what I was thinking in my head. Anyways, uh, now I jump over to my notes. How did I manage to do this? All my notes are on the wrong tab. Uh, what are you guys all saying? Oh, you're not even seeing stats. I don't even care. This is awesome. I forgot. Mm-hmm. Normally, I have to like be careful what tabs I'm using where, uh, and in this particular case, I don't have to. Um, so, uh, we pick up third week of school. Everybody's kind of settled into the kind of normal routine at this point. Everybody's used to their schedule. Everybody's used to where their classes are. They've met people, and I just actually uh, realized I made an assumption, but I'm going to ask you guys now. Um, have all of you joined a secret society and are you in the same ones? <laughs> I feel like Haley is definitely in one. Uh, she's a legacy. Mm-hmm. So I'm not quite sure what secret society it is, but like, sure. Yes. Yeah. And and yeah, because you weren't there. Uh, yeah, we did determine like some of the secret societies are totally like chill, like business school kind of stuff and some are like you know deep dark secrets and you know there's just a mad mix but because nobody knows what's going on it's all hush hush kind of stuff probably just like a yacht club sure like that sort of deal Mm -hmm. where rich people go to be rich together sure and uh chris craig um yes but given antimony's um, predilections is probably something obscure. Sure. And all super esoteric and yeah. Yep. Miss Bookworm. Um, yeah, I think she's probably a legacy too, but like in, in much in like in the first year of being in it and like maybe not fitting in. You're technically a member, but doesn't right. show up to a lot of functions. Well, no, I, she she goes through all the motions and does mm-hmm. everything that she's supposed to and should and, and like wants to, but like just doesn't seem to click and people find her weird or whatever. Sure. You're the only member of a club that used to exist. You're not sure how you joined it. That sounds about all right. Um, and uh, yeah, sorry. So, uh, yeah, we pick up with the. Uh, uh, third week of school um, and news um, starts popping up on wizard phones because we don't need letters delivered by owls. Thank you. Um, and, you know, the tweets and messages and, you know, videos start going out and Calliope Moriarty, the bleeding skull of the sisterhood of skulls, uh, one of the most infamous secret societies, um, a very misandrous witches above all others kind of coven um, uh, that actually originated after the events of Salem, uh, has been convicted of plots to destabilize the magical and mundane worlds in exchange for house arrest, around the clock protection, and removal of her uh, magical powers rather than summary execution uh she turned over the full register of all members of the sisterhood of skulls society uh she made no implications that anyone within the society was involved with her plots but this dismantles the potential of the society providing her power after having her personal power removed 
Naturally, the members of the society have disavowed her actions, but are in, uh, facing intense amounts of scrutiny by the government, friends, family, and neighbors. Um, as this is going off, like phones are blowing up. Some of the few members, the you know, the real uh, trio, which uh, what's the what's the, what's the term, the Mean Girl uh, Squad, like <laughs> cry out in terror as their secret society is being you know dismantled. Um, and as you guys are, you know, kind of seeing this, one of the other secret societies, the, uh, eternal flame circle, uh, have, you know, posted some, you know, social media stuff and masks and all that sharing a call across social media, enchanted scrolls and whispers out of the shadows that the sisterhood of skulls should be disbanded entirely and, uh, all members arrested. Uh, so that is the, uh, shenanigans that is going on in the, uh, lunchroom. Uh, the third week of school. Um, that's literally where my notes end. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we can just get into whatever shenanigans everybody is wanting to get into. And we may just go through classes and stuff. So I don't know if you all have any particular uh, um, plans or plots. Um, and 20s pretty young and so it just kind of goes with the flow generally speaking i would say that um priscilla leans over to like whatever other oddball is sitting with her like the nerd table or lunch or whatever yeah the nerd table uh it's like uh what's what's going on uh, yeah, you know, the, the the enchanted scroll, you know, gets whipped out and set in front of you and it's just piles of like posts and, you know, it's it's Twitter in, you know, scroll form. Right. Um, and it's just, you know, these people getting called out in, you know, various social medias of like these people are, you know, involved in this, that and the other. Um, there's details of the plots to like blow up parliament buildings and just like, yeah, like it's an intense level of like, we caught Voldemort before Voldemort started shit kind of vibe. Um, and so everybody is freaking out about these folks and uh, the, like the, yeah, you know, hang on, where's my, where's my random name generator? Cause this is a perfect, perfect place to use it. Um, oh, is there a good witch name generator in here? Where'd you guys get your names from? I made up a fancy name. Oh, my gosh. brain. Uh, I knew her name was going to be Haley, and then I looked up the Lacrosse Hall of Fame and picked a lacrosse player. Fair. Very good. <laughs> and Abercrombie. Yeah, it's right up there. Yeah, yeah uh, it fits. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, yeah, which name generator? We're set. Um, yeah, so... Uh, uh, Killian Wood, you know, kind of looks over at you and <laughs> You know, it's like, how how are you how are you not familiar with all of this stuff? Like, it, like and like looking over you and realizing there's probably no like social media at all been working like on your homework kind of thing. Right. I didn't see it on my timeline. She <laughs> kind of looks over and says, you. Who are you even following <laughs> that you're not seeing any of this? Oh, are you actually curious? I mean, now I am. Yeah. Oh, it's mostly a bunch of like obscure potions, which is like diving into like eighth century, uh, sort of the the classics. Um, you the, know, the, the eyes the glazing strong. over like this exactly. person is not real. It's like do do like no like no nobody in pop culture or like it, like room writers, Thunderdome players, anybody that what you have on your timeline? It's what everybody has on their timeline. Oh, well, I guess I should add some to mine then. Who do you suggest? Um, <laughs> and just like pulls, like, rolls the scroll up and starts like reading off names like, yeah, so and so like they're good, right? You've heard of them. Um, no. OK, uh, how about so and so you saw that movie, right? Was that the one with the dog? 
I think there was a dog in it. Was that the only thing you got out of that movie? The the one where uh, there's no rule that the dog can't play Thunderdome? Is that the one you're talking about? <laughs> it is now, yes. <laughs> oh, that one was yeah. good. Yeah, he was he was in that movie like when he started, uh, but now he's known for like big that dramatic was one of my works. favorites growing up, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and like immediately like, nope. She's hopeless. Turn. Hey, have you seen this <laughs> to, the, to the other side? Um, oh, good Lord. <laughs> I'm so on board for this game. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, anybody else chatting around the uh, the lunch room? Cool. So uh, no, no, it's perfect. Uh, I just feel like there's probably a lot of gossip going on about like who the members are that have been revealed. Oh yeah. Well, and that's some of the, the stuff that's like the registry is public now. Uh, so all these people we were like are, sitting around scrolling through, trying to like find names. And just like, oh, Buddy's you know? dad is on the list. And, or yeah. Like that. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and notably that is one of the things it is a literal, like witches, like female only oh, kind of sorry. group. Yeah. Which is one of the other things that has come up Maybe because mom. yeah. Yeah. Um, which, yeah. So there's, there's, there's like, there's reasons to hate this group. Also, there's reasons, hey, you could just chill the fuck out for that reason. Um, don't be that guy. Um, but uh, yeah, just for for the the hell of it, I feel like as lunch is ending, um, we have the three of you heading into, you know, Professor Farbridge's potions class after lunch. And like, you know, lecture is over and now it's lab time. <laughs> Which for some people is like, hell yes. For other people, oh fuck no. Yeah. This is excellent. <laughs> this is this is the best. Um I'm curious, and you know, feel free to chime in here. Um is is uh is Haley like upperclassman and all? Is this like a TA kind of thing? Or is this like old school, like here is like the the beginners here's the intermediate here's the experts and like the professors handling everybody kind of thing what do you guys think i like the second one yeah that's what i was thinking yeah and especially so, because it gives it gives a lot more reason for there to be interconnections between like mechanically for us to be able mm -hmm. to know each other but also for the secret societies to exist yeah like for recruitment and all sorts of things like that's that that's true yeah because i feel like we probably don't have that large of a student body, right? No, mm, uh, like maybe a hundred, you know, or so. It's definitely one of those like everybody eventually knows everybody. Uh, it seems probably too low for a bunch of secret societies to exist. Oh yeah, but yeah, I mean, not by bunch, I'm you know thinking like twenty or something like that, if if even that. And some of them are you know going to be you know allowed for you know multiple people to be. You know, so you can be in. The, the Richie Rich Club, but also be over there in the Sisterhood of Screaming Skulls. That's a better name. I just did Sisterhood of Skulls. It should have been Screaming Skulls. Anyways, uh, yeah, I went as metal as I could with that one. Um, but uh, yeah, so Professor Farbridge has like this enormous audit. Well, not now. It's not the auditorium. It has been converted during the lunch break into the the lab um, giant like bubbling pots and, you know, huge vials and as uh as everybody's coming in he announces everybody good news everybody the uh the pipes <laughs> thank you ash yeah the, the we, we we've unclogged the pipes everything is fine to uh to continue class um sorry about that and kind of looks over to a couple of kids who have like uh you know burn bandages on and stuff like that and it's just like yep that's right which school um uh, you're welcome chat also any of you who were momentarily uh thrown back several years <laughs> um with that comment um, um since this is my favorite class hell yes and your favorite that, teacher right um i did not specify gender but i was thinking a guy okay um a boisterous kind of kooky very doc brown sort of type oh good we're on the same page yeah, there exactly okay good <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. Which, by the way, yeah, for those of you at home, that is one of the other fun things. As If you're a DM and you're like, man, I don't have to come up with all these teachers. It's fine. You don't have to. It's their job to do it. Um, so, yeah. Um, and comes around and, you know, starts checking up on everybody and starts passing out scroll assignments uh, of note for uh, for um, Priscilla. He comes by and skips your desk with all the handouts and stuff like that. And then comes back around after handing out the intermediary level ones and drops that on your desk and kind of looks down and says, let's try something that will actually challenge you this time. Are you up for it? Wow. Yeah, that sounds exciting. Good. <laughs> and then like makes way over to the upper classmen. Um, and yeah, just to, you know, link stuff up here, you know, comes by Haley's desk um, and hands you assignment and like holds it like that, you know, I'm not letting go just yet and looks over and says, make you a deal. And if you don't okay. want, if you don't want to work on this one. Kind of looks over and like points all the way to the young uh, underclassman says, Miss, uh, shoot, what was the last name? Uh, Ashburn over there is a rising star. I really think that she's going to go somewhere with potions. So maybe I just give you an A on this assignment and you go make sure that she gets through her assignment. Just give her, you know, you don't have to do it for her. I'm sure she's going to breeze through it, but just an, an extra pair of hands because it is going to be dealing with some stuff that she may not have worked with before and just, you know. <laughs> See, I'm torn because I'm like, do I? It I like the idea of like mentoring someone who this guy, the professor, thinks is going to be like someone of value. Mm -hmm. But I don't like cheaping out on my own assignment and being lazy. Right. That's and I, I knew this was a perfect ash attack. Yep. <laughs> Just. Could we not do both? I mean, if you, yeah, um, uh, and like points at like a set of empty desks and says, well, take your stuff over there, ma'am. And then like walks off like in a huff um, and and then like moves Priscilla. And like everyone is watching and like everyone can tell exactly what the professor is doing, but he's putting on like, you know, uh, what was it? Yeah, Haley being sent over there. Priscilla, I don't like your attitude. <laughs> and sends, sends you both off. And, and like looks down, especially that that face and kind of like nods. And there's a there's a wink. It's like, go. <laughs> hey. <laughs> stuff. stuff in a bag. I don't know what I did. <laughs> Poor Bean. <laughs> You got any ideas, Bean? I have Sneaking no idea what into I did. class. I mean, yeah, I like the familiars go everywhere with everybody. So the, the book says they don't. It says they're not allowed in class most of the time because they're disruptive. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so like, but well, I think like you make that like comment to Bean. Look up, and the professor is looking at you. <laughs> Um, meanwhile, uh, and and Timony, antimony, antimony, uh, is uh, sort of absent mindedly doodling on her desk, like with a little sparkle finger. Um, not a fan of potions, and it's a whole day every Tuesday with Thursday, it just kind of sucks. <laughs> She's not into it, she has to take it, yeah, gotcha. And like, any, any, like eyeing up what's what's going on or is it just like she's in another world contemplating a new way to try and talk to the dead or um yeah definitely not engaged in this particular class um but she's also smuggled in uh, bunny is kind of riding on her neck underneath her hair totally it's just it's just a hair band man <laughs> like just... <laughs> you're, um, you're make it i'd like to i'd like to establish that uh I mean, I guess we're in different years, but uh, that Priscilla and, and uh, Antimony were uh, lab partners, like right at the start. And sure. that's like the only person that uh, 
Priscilla has been mean to because you just don't care. That's not <laughs> acceptable. You don't respect. How could you the not like potions? potions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So some friction in the past, and now you make a point of arranging so you're not partnered with her again. Mm-hmm. Never oh, again. Oh. I'm sure you're a perfectly nice person, <laughs> but not in this case. Get away from me. <laughs> Elsewhere, perhaps we can be friends, but not here. I, I totally messed up and we're not going to stop now to do it. But yeah, also part of character creation is the relationship questions between oh, yeah, the characters. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, oops. Oh, well, we're going to we're going to keep going. Um, this is fun. All right. So we're at the desk together now. Mm-hmm. Eventually, we will have a, um, a, a brains. Well, you can roll whatever you want. I'm sure you're going to roll brains on the assignment uh, here in a bit. But yeah. I mean, if we're if we're chatting and role playing, hell yeah, keep going. Oh, hello. Hi. Um. Do you know what I did wrong? I don't think you've done anything wrong. Well, why did I get hooved and fussed at? The professor believes you can handle a challenge. And he asked me to make sure that you did. Oh. I didn't wish to abandon my own assignment. Oh, I see. In order to do that. So. Oh, I see. A pretense. A pretense. Underst- understood. Um, well, I'm, I'm Priscilla. Hi, I'm Haley. She can't. <laughs> oh. You're the one that does everything. <laughs> I heard about you. Um, yes, I suppose. Aren't you in like the student government and everything? Yes, I am one of the reps for our grade. Hmm. Well, my grade. Well, it's nice to meet you. I'm going to do potions now. Okay. <laughs> and just like turns <laughs> and stops <laughs> talking. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know if you have any questions i will probably just be watching when i'm not doing my own um and yes uh because this is not a uh snap decision uh so this is a plan check um now this is for like uh what, where is this here yeah so this is this is a pretty tough assignment um it's not like extreme test level so it is it is a 10 which i know uh, priscilla is going to have no problem with but uh, that is yeah um <laughs> uh, because uh for plan checks um instead of rolling you can just take half of the die um so i will tell you that the the check is a 12 um which is uh, as described a task where success is impressive but expected for those who are skilled at it um so it is a 12 uh, because as a plan check, uh, you can take half or roll. Uh, you can also spend uh, adversity tokens and anybody on the team who is assisting can also spend adversity tokens to help you. Snap decisions, you don't get to do that. Um, and then uh, just as a mechanical thing, anytime you actually roll and get the highest number, it explodes and you can roll again up until you meet or exceed the check. Um, so I know for uh, Antimony, nope, excuse me, for Priscilla, uh, this shouldn't be too difficult. It's just a 12. Um, may have to put some effort into it or may just risk it. So. So how do you get bonuses to your numbers? Um, by default, it's just going to be from your strengths, from your grade. And uh, then in the case of the magic stuff, based on your wand. Um after that, it's spending adversity tokens. Um, so if you, for each adversity token you spend, which you start with three, uh, for each adversity token you spend, you get a plus one unless um, you have a particular strength. I can't remember which one it is. And then you get adversity tokens for failing rolls. I have rolled a random potion generator. 
Nice. Find the assignment. Mm-hmm. And I like this one. It is your hair color changes according to your mood. So you have like mood ring hair. So Warbreaker. Well, sort of. <laughs> but I love it. Yes. This is a right. top tier like cosmetic, like mm-hmm. popular, like see it in all the wizard malls. Yeah. I love that. Um, so this is brains. Uh, yeah, technically, you tell me what skill check, uh, you, what you want to use for it, and then I'll tell you how difficult that is. So in this case, brains oh, makes sense for Priscilla. Technically, you could be like, I'm going to use charm to get another student to help me, or something like that, which may be actually lower. Uh, right, I thought the, the magic was tied in, like the stat was tied into particular kinds of magic. In the case of magic, yes. Uh, oh, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. This is magic. Potions are yeah. magic. Yeah. So you have to roll. Potions are fight, right? Fight, charm, and grit. Right. So this is probably charm. Based. Well, and this is uh, and this is where we get into. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, it would be charm. Or yeah. flight. So it's kind of illusiony and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm good with either of those. That's true. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm having fine. to roll back and remember. Oh, technically potions are magic. Yeah, yeah, because you can like store them and then you just get the guaranteed effect mm-hmm. when later. Mm-hmm. later. Yeah, when which mm-hmm. of note, magic can never be a plan check. Um, right. It always has to be uh, rolled, but you also get a d4 to roll on top of it. Okay. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna do this with with flight. I think the the illusiony sort of mm-hmm. side of it. I think if I recall reading all the stats, right, that mm-hmm. makes sense. Um, so I have a plus one to that from my wand. Um, my trained in potions wouldn't apply to here because those stats aren't, this doesn't have flight as part of that. Or does it? I mean, I, I, I think know. it should because okay. if you're doing okay. potions, yeah. Already? I haven't rolled anything on this. Very yeah, you should be able there. to click the button over on the right. Um, I don't know magic. if it has a magic check mark or not. Maybe yeah, see. it asks you stat or magic, ah. and then bonus or penalties. Yeah, no particular like an additional plus one. Yeah, and the yeah. next you spend, you roll, and then you spend adversity tokens after. Um, okay. So you may not need them, or you may realize, oh, I'm not going to make it with my three, so I'm just going to take a fail. Um, of note. And, Oh, well, there's got a 12. A 12. <laughs> Perfect. Um, oh, oh, that's right. Because you have my D12. Yeah. Um, and uh, of note for those following along or trying to learn the system, planned checks, i.e. not magic, um, anything that you have time to plan out because you can take that half of your die roll and you can know ahead of time whether or not this is going to work more or less or you decide to roll and take that chance. Because of that, the storyteller is encouraged to um, fuck you up if you take a chance and it fails on snap Mm. decisions because you don't have that chance and it's already like tight on time. You've got a lot of pressure Mm. that the failure should be less dramatic because you're already in a bad spot anyways. Uh, So, yes, this is great. Uh, So Um, wait, so I should have a D4 on top of that as well. Correct. Mm hmm. Okay, so it didn't roll. You get that whenever you do. Anytime you do magic, you get an extra d4. Okay, I don't know that it matters if I beat it by more. Um, it does actually have a slight difference when casting uh spells because it tells you how um spectacular it is. I've got a total of a fifteen then. Gotcha. Um, technically, normally, and this is just to give you a heads up. Um when you are making a potion, you would basically plan out what the spell is mm-hmm. and then you add plus five to it. And that's how you come up with the difficulty for actually making. Oh, OK. It. Yeah. Uh, in this case, because we're just doing it in class. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so it's more about succeeding within the boundaries of the class rather than exactly. making the potion. Spell checks. Where is this thing here? So 15. So you beat it by three, uh, which on our handy dandy page 56 tells us that the character casts the spell, or in this case, brews the potion, but not impressively. Sure, it works, and it's clear the character puts serious effort into making it succeed. The spell functions as expected. So, actually, pretty spot on for 
you know, mm-hmm. uh, for Priscilla. Inching above my weight class. Mm-hmm. Um, and we won't necessarily make everybody roll potions to see how well you do in class. Uh, but I do love that, you know, we, we have class go through and, and, you know, have everybody proceed through some people paying more attention and actually going through and others just like, I'm just going to just lay through this. And see if mine works. All right, sure. Um, so it should be basically uh, the, the same kind of check you're looking for a 12 um, because it is going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, what attribute are you rolling to make your potion work? What was it? Uh, flight, I... charm, and grit. Potion is just generally fight, charm, and grit. Fight. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I like the idea of that. Just sort of very methodically um, attacking the problem, kind of like. <laughs> Hell yeah! There's there's no like style to it. It's just like. This is explicitly what is supposed to be done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, show this potion who's boss. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Wow. Uh, roll the d4 on top of that. Because we're over by five. Which takes us into the next tier. Uh, over by eight. Okay, so character brews the potion quite impressively to anyone watching. It seems like the spell uh, that this is a spell potion that the character has mastered. The spell functions perfectly. Uh, so, yeah, I, and especially because um, now this is not the same potion because uh, you're over there on that expert tier upperclassman grade. But yeah, so this is yeah for Priscilla, like, hey. <laughs> this this person actually knows potions compared to that stupid antimony. That was well done. Thank you. You did very well also. Oh, thanks. <laughs> actually, I guess... This I, was I, a relatively difficult potion. I'm impressed. I mean, it, it made sense to me. So, you know, a little bit of intuition, I guess. I think I get it from my dad. Is your dad a great potions master? Mm -hmm. He invented the blank potion. Actually, I don't remember. No, no, you were just involved in. What was the background for your family? I'm trying to remember because I remember they were they made money. Yeah, I, I mean, they're, you know, Oh, okay. Society society wizards of some sort. Oh, okay, like, gotcha. Would would not be. I, I think I think it's within the realm of possibility that our families know each other, but the fact that that is a connection that Priscilla would have to, uh, sorry, I just Haley. blanked. Haley was like over her head. Like, <laughs> there's oh, yeah. no there's no connection of like that side of the world to this and. Um, and in my head, I have found you as a possible future asset. Love that. May need to recruit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so actually, Craig, um, rather than roll magic, uh, and you're totally welcome to, but does does she get by class by more mundane means and like chatting with folks? Because I know she's the weird girl. She's the eccentric, but yeah, she's used to people not wanting to hang out very much. So I think she would just try and uh, make it look like she's putting the, in the effort. If you're not paying attention, like Firebridge is usually fairly distracted. Oh, yeah. He's got a ton of students here doing a bunch of different stuff. Mm-hmm. And sometimes things catch on fire. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I just want to make it look like uh, I'm putting in the effort. Yeah, so no but, actual yeah. magic. I mean, technically, mm-hmm. yes, but no, it's just all covering up. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, what stat do you want to? What do you want to roll? Uh, well, um, what stat do you want to use? You don't necessarily need to roll because this would definitely be a planned action. I'm thinking flight. That makes sense. Yeah, for just kind of. But I don't want, like. I'm thinking this wouldn't be a planned action. It's like, oh shit! I better make it look like I'm doing stuff, and there's 
wing it kind of thing. Sure. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to complain. Uh, now, that said, the, the difficulty on this is not all that high. Uh, where's my little thing? Um, there it is. Um, yeah, this is just um, to, to blend in in class is is a six. Um, so it's not at all too difficult. Stat bonus would apply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just not the magic bonus. Uh, no bonuses, penalties. Mm -mm. Cool. cool. 17. No problem. Uh, and these ones don't have the, the same little scale of how how bad did you beat it? But yeah, get into class and just uh, act like you're adding this thing, act like you're adding that thing. And then, you know, oh, all right, everybody, you know, turn your assignments in and just it's a little drop it off. And whoops, I guess I didn't do it. Oh, well, bye. <laughs> And I, I think specifically with the flight aspect, I think it's like end of class. Everybody's kind of filing out and turning in their work. And she just kind of steps up, drops the thing and then ducks. Like as soon as Professor Farbridge actually, because your Professor Farbridge gets distracted talking to Priscilla. Right. Mm -hmm. And oh, this is very good. And this is uh, thank you, Miss Inkart. <laughs> just like out the door. It's like, wait oh. a second. looks picks up like the I, absolutely empty vial or go ahead and if i can set something up um i want to just be lurking on the other side of the doorway just sort of leaning up against the wall so as people coming out there and i want to interrupt um when uh i don't know her name i memorize all the names Haley um, or Priscilla. Haley. and when Haley comes out just gonna say something as she's walking by sure um just he's wasting his efforts where they he should be focusing where somebody actually has some talent. And it's up to Haley if she responds to that. But as you're walking by, Ant Antoine would say that. Oh. Just a little bathroom. I was like, was that directed at me? Yeah, let, let's go ahead and let Craig clarify what the statement was intended for. And then. Yeah, he's he's pumping up Priscilla like she's some sort of. Um, you know, um, savant. savant, right? But you you have the skills and could benefit from that sort of tutelage is the implication that, that Antoine is trying to make. And I, I do need to point out, I, I love the fact that it's this little 13-year-old is telling yeah. me. <laughs> just like, okay. And just walk, keep on walking. Yeah. And Antoine walks away. <laughs> what was that? Just like stop and turn, look down. Just like, sure. <laughs> oh, what a weird kid. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, so yeah, um, let's see here. Yeah, we'll we'll make this Thursday. Uh, so that means that uh, Priscilla is headed to Thunderdome. Uh, nobody else has anything on the schedule. Um, so I'm going to assume that it is actually a Thunderdome like game day, uh, and so like everybody shows now that may not literally be everybody but who's all in the stands for for thunderdome because like everybody goes to it but you know some people right. are you know i'm there but i'm like in amongst a group of friends entirely not into it um if everyone's going to be there then like antimony will be there but she's probably going to slip away under the bleachers with a book like I was you were seen going to it, but then right. like, yeah. And then uh, then I imagine Priscilla is suited up. In like shoulder pads that are too big for her and like, yeah, I love it, um, which uh, I, I think this is going to be. Um, yeah, this is definitely a snap decision for her. Of how well she she does under pressure, the the entire student body is watching you and your team. Uh, go rah rah! I don't know what team name you want to throw in there, but um, yeah, and uh, pretty sure this. Well, I guess flight might work, but yeah. Uh, I was thinking grit. I was oh, thinking that's she's, on, she's on defense. Sure, because she she hasn't showed promise as a like, you know getting breakaways or like really making all the transitions between the different you know 
the the interior well, the, the of the flippy box. bits, right? Yeah. yeah. So she's playing defense and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, now, uh, would, well, I guess because grit is like the more mental side of it, or do you mean? Uh, I, I'm I'm good with both. I just for the flavor of the of the role is grit is the more like mentally, you know, holding your own, while brawn is the like physical side. Yeah, I mean, I think she's getting physically outplayed, right? But it's about like, okay, if they're coming this way, then I need to, like, it's making smart, like, not smart, but like making calculated, like, staying in the game, even though you're getting played, not like losing her heart. That yeah, kind of stuff. yeah, perfect. Yeah, okay. I dig that. Roll that grit. Uh, Well, I guess I technically should tell you what the difficulty is. I gotta be better about that. Uh, da, 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 da. where's stat checks? Oh, no, that spells. Because, yeah, just keep, yeah, I think this is going to be an eight. Got a D10. Here we go. Well, it's been an adversity token. Almost for that token. <laughs> it gives you a plus one, right? Yep. Yep. And so you, and that is one thing I like. You don't have to bet them ahead of time. You can just be like, I have now seen the role and I'm not happy with it. Let me spend a token. Uh, so, yeah, uh, keep your head in the game, you know, even though like physically just outmatched. But it's like, no, I refuse to give up. You get one of those like, is, is it a great play that you end up stopping? No, but it's the first one that she's done. And right. she like got in she gets, there. If I can, I think <laughs> she gets like totally bowled over by a charge uh and then like happens to have like just smartly knocked the ball out of their out of their uh out of their stick out of their stick yep. like yeah, whatever that thing person, is like goes like they like tumbles through her and go to take a shot and then they like look back and it's just like on the ground next to priscilla who's just like laid out, flat. <laughs> laid out. <laughs> and so yeah and it i mean probably for priscilla is like laid out made that move and then there's the gasp and then the clap and it's like dude i did that <laughs> uh yeah i'd love that uh, and then just like it up and just ups <laughs> it away just like out of here somewhere else yes, just away <laughs> not a plan away i like that um uh, uh is there a drama afoot in the uh, in the stands or underneath the stands I've probably started paying attention when I notice the tiny oh, little Priscilla. word girl from Potions attempting to play. Probably just, I mean, it's definitely like a slight of kind of a mean edge to it. I'm just like, oh, well, let's see how this goes. <laughs> you are the haughty descendant after all. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, and then underneath the... Uh, Actually, you know, I think underneath the uh, the bleachers, we have like the the non mainstream cool kids under there. <laughs> like there's you know some 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 stuff being passed between them. Things are, things are being you know smoked, and they look over as the the itty bitty little blonde thirteen year old girl shows up with a book. What do you and like one of them comes over? What are you doing down here? Well, attending these functions is a non-optional social exercise. No, oh, it's totally optional. It's There's just everybody comes. Right. This is a social expectation. Oh. Yeah. So I'm here fulfilling that obligation. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like us. All right, come on. <laughs> and like put like takes the book from you and puts it in your backpack. And she's like, eh, um, uh, okay. <laughs> come on. And like just all of a sudden you're just dragged into this social they're super friendly. They're 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 a little weird, but like super friendly and just chatting with you and like, yes. Yeah, so, so what grade are you in? I I'm an underclassman. You like there because I imagine she's small, you know, she's 13. Mm -hmm. Are you are you old enough to to do it? Like, just like they have 
in, like they start to encircle mm -hmm. just like what you know what is your deal um so a little overwhelmed with the attention so to try and break that she um pulls a jar out of her bag and she you guys want some crickets or not crickets grasshoppers crickets are for the spider are you actually attempting to like make friends and charm them or are you like this is this is my defense mechanism yeah this is this is getting a little too intense so she's trying to deflect them with something else i like that okay so she has some uh chocolate covered grasshoppers that she has around carries around for snacks but they're like they're actually alive so <laughs> <laughs> like because everyone's like oh that's kind of cool oh oh that's... Yeah, and they're like crawling around in the inside of the jar <laughs> it's like that's that's how does the chocolate stay on? Magic. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Craig. <laughs> uh, I love that. Uh, They're actually bugs. Actually bugs, yeah. <laughs> okay. yep. uh, yeah, so all of them kind of recoil back. Uh, so, yeah, what, what, what are you, you going to roll for this? Um, since this is a like a distraction, I think uh, I have a charm or flight. You tell me. Um, I'll go for charm. Okay, yeah. So, like the like playing it up, and they're they're really gross and kind of leaning into the not necessarily saleswoman act, but the the show of it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be. Mm, I think I'm good with a nine. Uh, it it's going to be kind of tough to yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I. And I, I'm thinking this is either going to she's either going to impress them with this or it's going to really weird them out and they're going to exclude her either way. It's a win. Right. <laughs> hey. Hey, indeed. Uh, yeah. So like there's definitely like, no, no, we're good. But you realize they're like, all right, she's she, she's weird. We're we're okay with this, and then like somebody else, like oh oh, and like pulls open like their bag of stuff and pulls out like some other weird. Hey, and let me show you this, and it's like some like uh oh what is it the, the hand of glory right like some some criminals desiccated hand. Check this thing I I got out, and like they start past, and you realize you found like the weirdos who are just on this side of the like criminal you know, side of magic, which technically all magic is is allowed. It's just the consequences thereafter are the things that, you know, get people arrested. And they're like, that's cool. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like people are just all of a sudden start exchanging like weird stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, you make some weird friends who probably aren't into the same things as you, but you're all into weird stuff. And mm -hmm. that's the yeah, and that is how that goes. The yes, small I was school. gonna say, and there's a whole bunch of people who are nodding their heads, going, "Yep, yep, uh huh." Just like the idea of baby and Timony accidentally befriending some delinquents. <laughs> yep, yeah, because I'm I, I'm imagining like the leather jackets and you know, yeah. Which kind of plays up with the chat comment about Antimony you know, accidentally joining a secret society. That's yeah. actually probably yeah. Uh, so as uh, outside the, stickers on their uh, <laughs> brooms. Yes. Um, outside the the Thunderdome game ends um, and, uh, you know, things kind of settle down um, because Priscilla actually got her role. Their team wins. Uh, right. Yay! And so, you know, they're, you know, people heading back to the dorms to celebrate uh though obviously for some people there's night classes and some of the different clubs and uh yeah we have uh <laughs> Craig Craig you're off to Necropolis Club which um That's awesome we we kind of like waffled back and forth what did we end up determining if that was actually a club or a class i can't remember um i think there's like an informal um club sort of like the dead poet society all right, that's, that's right. Teacher run, but not actually like a class for for grades and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But no, not teacher run. Oh, did it's we say informal... faculty? Because no, I felt like there was somebody. I mean, I could be totally wrong, but yeah, I thought we. It had could said... be like an upperclassman or something, maybe. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so this so... is sort of a a recurring theme that goes from year to year in the school. It's people with a you know, macabre interest in dead, or just like exploring new things or different things. Oh, like that. so this is not exploring the tunnels underneath the school club. I mean, it's, it it's one of the things that they do. 
Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, the, the tunnels have yeah the the definite necropolis, you know, buried bodies and you know all sorts of other weird stuff and like there's definitely and I think <laughs> but didn't Tiffany like pick up the fact that like she's hanging out with the evil necromancer types or I don't know that would ever occur to her, right? Um, in her mind, they just have an interest in the dead, and she has an interest in the dead, so yeah. I, I, accidental necromancer <laughs> i dig that i suppose that might end up happening <laughs> uh so yeah like you all get together i mean oh perfect that, that's i love that name cool so yeah um you all gather up together um in one of the like unused classrooms and uh <clears throat> the leader of the group senior about to graduate Michael Cloven uh, <laughs> steps up and I was like, oh, yes, that's a good one. Uh, steps up and kind of raps on the, uh, you know, the. Lectern mm-hmm. and says, all right, all right, everybody shut the fuck up. Uh, and this being, you know, a uh, school like this is definitely like, oh, yeah, they cur- you know, like teachers aren't around. All right. This is the class where uh, this is the, the time where everybody curses because they can. Um, and. Uh, all right. So uh, anybody have any new business, anything to talk about before we head down into the necropolis? Cool. I'm um, supposed to read this and like pulls out this little like super folded piece of paper and. Uh, uh, where's my notes? I lost my notes. Any member of the oh, it's because I closed my notes. Any member of the Sisterhood of Screaming Skulls or Skulls or whatever the hell it is um, should uh, should report themselves uh, up front to uh, myself or any member of the leadership um, uh, because uh, we we can't have you uh, associated with the Necropolis Club due to uh, recent events. Um, thanks. Well, he sort of similarly puts up her head. Like every everybody turns going, oh no, no, shit! No, no, I have a question. Oh, oh yeah, okay. What's up? Yeah, uh, um, I, I I thought they were only um looking for the adult members. None of the um none of the student members were listed in the in the, in the register. Data. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, the, they're not. But you know, if anybody's a uh, associated with them we don't we don't want them associated with the club um we just we don't need you don't need people like that like in the club so like if you're a member um like i'm not saying you are um but anybody here who is um yeah let us know let us know what your plans are for like leaving the society or just you know stop showing up to the club because we don't want you here um you're not welcome uh yeah, turning into a witch hunt. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> um. So Antimony would kind of stand up and look at the rest of the group. Are you all supporting this? I mean, they they were not a good group, and anybody who wants to stay in the group should, you know, like not hang out with us. Like if if people are finding out now that it's a bad group and that they leave the group, then like it's cool, you know. People people can change. They can realize they were doing bad stuff or had bad opinions or were misinformed, and it's okay to be like, "Oops, I didn't know better. Thank you for informing me. Now I'm going to be better." Like it's okay to do that. It doesn't make you a hypocrite. It just means that you learned something. But you know, these people, they they um, they're fucking assholes. Um, just the mood. What's everyone else like? Is everyone seem yeah, like, to agree with that? Be, yeah, because for everybody else, like you're hearing throughout the news, and yeah, because we we talked about Priscilla not you know, necessarily being in on the news, but yeah, everything you've seen, it's like there's lots of reports of like the membership in this group were were not great people. Um, you know, you, you know, criminals who are already in jail or people who have like sketchy backgrounds or they were involved in weird stuff um yeah this is in no way supposed to be like a group anybody good was part of um like it was very clearly a like 
kill muggles, rule the world kind of group. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to call on our good friend Ralph, though he's not yet here. Uh, this is this is not somebody who has a redeeming factor uh, underneath. The, no, the, these guys are all just assholes. Right. Um, OK. And um, Antoine then um, just sort of ah, takes a breath and then packs up her bag and walks out. I dig it. Um, and everyone watches and they're like, why is she like, like, yeah, I think you hear in the background, you know, like, well, why is she leaving? Is this, is she brought her the sister to schools. She didn't seem hardcore, but maybe she is hardcore. Holy shit. <laughs> like, I think she's in my uh, hang on, let me jump over here. Da, 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 da. Yeah, she's in my transfiguration class. Holy shit. <laughs> And so begins the rumor that Intimity is a member of the Sisterhood of Skulls. <laughs> Love it. Yep. Uh, sweet. Uh, actually, this is uh, right about 730. Well, actually, hang on. Let me backtrack just a little bit. So after Thunderdome, um, which I, I appreciate it. Sorry for everybody who can't see Roll20, but like everything else is in lowercase except for Thunderdome, <laughs> which is in all caps. So you have to say it that way. It's just sorry. It's the, it's the rules. Um, uh, uh, Priscilla and Haley, uh, what do you guys do for your quote unquote, at least on the schedule, uh, empty evening? Uh, I didn't realize those were meant to be classes. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, Haley has like an evening art class, which it is a class you do get graded on it, but it's also like the closest thing she has to like a hobby. It's an elective and yeah, yeah. this I is, this is a fun class. <laughs> Makes Thursday nights pretty okay. It's like go watch Thunderdome game and then go paint a bunch of shit. Yeah. Uh, so she's in like drawing class. I dig that. Um, and what about for uh, for Priscilla? Um, I think she is definitely getting her homework done, and. Uh, Yeah, you know, sure. sitting there looking up obscure potion bullshit. Gotcha. Yeah, so probably like, oh, yeah, go team. Uh, they're off to go like party and celebrate a win. And she kind of detours over to be like, I'm actually going to get my homework done and study up for like class for next week kind of thing. Gotcha. Yeah, I think she like. By this point, people have stopped bothering her about it. But she like sets up shop like in front of the like communal fireplace and like uses that to to mess around with her potions and stuff like that. I dig that. And, like we're like we could be could all relax, you know, like Greg brought marshmallows. I'm like, well, um, I don't need them for my potion. Sorry. Um <laughs> Just just one one track mind. It's not necessarily all potions, but it's almost all schoolwork all the time, except for Thunderdome. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> it's explicitly like she's pushing herself to do this uh, so that she can like try and make friends and, and do something different. Right. right. And branch but out a little for, bit. For her, Thunderdome is just a personally assigned assignment. Yeah, I think her, well, I'll say her mom encouraged it like dad is like it's like no like she's, she's good at it runs in the family just let her let her do her thing and mom's like no she needs to be more well-rounded like i dig it i love it yeah um cool so we are gonna run and take our break um also hi carrot um uh we appreciate you swinging in real quick uh but yeah we're gonna take our break uh, i'm gonna get a little bit more coffee i'm gonna ping ralph see where he's at um and uh, see if he will manage to join us. But uh, yeah, so we'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, we're back. We have no Hello, Ralph, everyone. but but <laughs> but we do have, have a Ziggy yeah. for maybe a few more seconds. Enjoy He's it. baby for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody, say hi, Ziggy. But uh, oh, I think I may have gotten a message back.
see how perky his ears are? That means he's happy. Mm -hmm. That's a happy cat. He's wagging his tail, too. That's exactly what that means. Mm -hmm. Are you looking at yourself? <laughs> of course yeah. I am. I am a cat. <laughs> All right. Uh, and yeah, I did just get a message back from Ralph that he does not believe he will be able to join us. He's taking care of some Aww. some some friend friend duties, as Craig had mentioned, and uh, we will totally support that. Um, oh, yeah. Rookery mug. <laughs> Which that was fun. Wearing. Like rookery stuff all during packs and just be like, here's my OA shirt. Here's my rookery shirt. And then the badass OA uh, into the West shirt. <laughs> Um, and I did find three days there, four days, technically found three people who played Mage the Awakening, uh, and nice. they joined us on discord cause they are good people. Uh, nice. <laughs> I was very, very good. I was like, so somebody made a comment of like, oh yeah, Mage is my favorite game. And I was like, yeah, here we go about Ascension. I was like, Awakening or Ascension? Uh, yeah, Awakening. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so I turned over to Ian. Uh, who runs, Ge runs Gehenna Gaming and <laughs> yelled at him, there's two of us! And the sad thing is Ian knew exactly what I was talking about. Uh, <laughs> and then it turned out there's three of us. It's like, Ian's like, oh no. <laughs> it's like, there's, oh my god, people actually play Awakening. It was terrific. Thanks. So, yeah, if you're out there, if you're watching us now on YouTube or Twitch for some reason, hi. Um, anyways, uh, we jump back uh, into our Kids on Brooms shenanigans within the Chiron's Conservatory of Might and Magic. Um, I am having to pull Chris and Ash away from the oh, potion uh, generator. Uh, <laughs> Bye, Ziggy. Uh, You're just getting really hilariously bad poisons. They're not potions. They're poisons. Um, What's the difference? That's fair. Uh, same thing with alcohol. It's like technically poison, but... <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I guess that makes this Friday morning. So we have, uh, actually that's true. Um, does Priscilla have a class Friday morning or is that her like late start day? That is a late start day. Cool. Well, cause the, the book recommended that under, underclass folks have like only three classes, right? It's like only three classes. The class are supposed to have like four or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, for our purposes, it doesn't actually matter for those of you who plan to play long term on this. That's used for determining um, getting marks in your classes so that you can uh, get skill ups. Um, so you can actually progress uh, as opposed to the one shot vibe. Um, so, yeah, we have uh, we have Haley over in History of Magic and then we have uh, in Timoni uh, over in uh, Transfiguration with uh Miss Zendoba. Now, I do want to clarify before we describe uh, Miss Zendoba is by giving her the name Miss, are we thinking that she's not like a full professor or is this a different uh, or is that just the, you know, standard she, name? Um, no, she's like a full on um, a prof at the school, but she prefers to be less formal. Oh, OK, cool. Mm -hmm. So tell us about Miss Zendoba because it is your favorite class. So uh, favorite class, uh, she is. Um, um, I guess the best way to describe it, she's slightly bonkers. Um, really, in a good Great. natured, absent-minded <laughs> sort of way. Um, so she meshes well with Antimony's um, you know, predilections and stuff. Um, and she's uh, um, transfiguration for her is like it's a it's a fun activity. It's a way to explore the world, get different perspectives. Broaden your horizons. Mm -hmm. I think the world looks a lot different if you're a cat or a snake mm -hmm. than it is as a person. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. which I guess yeah, that's true. Uh, casting spells on yourself probably isn't uh, going to ping the Council of Malicious Magic. Uh, mm -hmm. And then obviously turning objects into other things is also useful. Um, so uh, they're consensual cross person magic. I would feel like there would be, right? You would imagine so. Yeah. And that may get it be, you know, where you get into like the usefulness of potions. But um, right. and I do believe the book actually calls out. Let me see if I can find this real quick. Um, um, the unprovoked casting of magic on unwilling victims, especially oh, if the magic could you. harm them, is one of the gravest crimes that a caster can commit. So, yeah, oh, casting stuff, fair. you know, on friends and all. Yeah. Um, uh, 
Um, but uh, yeah, I'm ignoring chat now. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I didn't wake up to, to deal with this crap. Um, what was I saying about? Oh, yes. So um, in your class um, already, word has has spread of uh, Antimony being a member of the Sisterhood of Skulls, like a brand like first year, 13 year old underclassman. And, you know, she she does wear if, if I remember correctly, she does wear a lot of black. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The very, very classic, you know, and, you know, it, I mean, she's by description, she is a female Draco Malfoy. Yeah. OK, a little, little, little yeah, without bit the, without the maliciousness. Right. Right. Sorry. For visual purposes. Yeah. Um, and was, uh, yeah. And so, yeah. And like and you walk into class, you know, and some other people are there other people, and like just watching like, holy crap, because not only are you a member, but also we're totally chill, clearly about telling everybody that you were now, of course, that is all bullshit and hearsay and rumor. But that's how schools work. Is it? Yeah, or is it? Um, yeah, so everybody, you know, kind of settles into class and the the assignment is up on the board. We're going to be working on uh, turning this uh, lump of coal that you have on your desk into, uh, well, you know, it is the Christmas season. Um, yeah, so we're going to turn coal into, you know, some form of, you know, toy, wooden horse, something like that. A, you know, rather drastic uh, mechanical and... Uh, chemical change but via magic uh mm -hmm. and uh as you know everybody starts working through you know get their their swish and flick uh, down <clears throat> excuse me uh miss Endoba comes over to uh to your you know little workstation little well workstation it's not potions it's just you know, your desk and kind of like does a little wrap on it and kind of, and, and leans in and says when when you're done there um meet me at my desk Okay. And you have to totally oblivious. Huh? Totally oh, oblivious. oblivious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I lean into the if somebody has a favorite teacher, then you are obviously their favorite student. Um, mm -hmm. so um and she she is over at her desk, which is just a and, and feel free to help me here with this, Greg, because it, she is your favorite teacher, but it is just a like cacophony of like Things that are have been turned into other things um, mm -hmm. and very clearly. And they're all for her art pieces. But for other people, it's like that's that's a little little messed up. That's a little yeah, that weird. Is, yeah. And also by far the dirtiest desk anyone has ever seen. Oh, yeah. It's just a chaos of <laughs> clutter and things falling apart. And yeah. Um, and she is hidden behind it like mm -hmm. she can't actually see any student. Maybe if she stands back up, you know, she can see. But there's just all sorts of jumbles of different weird shapes and, you know, uh, plant like living topiary bushes and, you know, all sorts of, you know, well, topiary bushes are living animal topiary bushes that are walking around. Yeah, uh, yeah like a topiary bird that actually flies around the room and has right. a perch. And stuff. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And uh, yeah, when when you when you approach, she is doing the very classic like morning teacher thing. So she's got like papers on her desk. She's sipping, you know, from actually this is this is wizard school. So she has like a giant chalice of coffee um, and, you know, si sips at that. And, uh, and, and, and Timony, darling. Um, Good morning. Hmm? Oh. Yes. Uh, and Timothy, darling, because uh, <laughs> there is going to be one character who does it, I guess. Um, um, there, there's some interesting um, discussions that were were mentioned in uh, our, our morning staff meeting. Um, considering the news yesterday, are, are, are you all right, dear? I'm fine. So the the recent news doesn't have you um, troubled or anything. I, I just think it's a little unfair that the actions of one person are being used to persecute a whole class of people. Well, it's not a class of people. It's people that are have joined a, a secret society that is. 
And and you, like you can see, she's like looking to see like. I, I think we'll, we'll flat out say she actually looks like she might be scared of you. Um, like it's it's that very classic, like maybe she, you know, she might lash out because you are that quiet, unassuming type. And yeah. Oh, and oh she's no. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, she's like, you you know, and she's kind of trying to check in. But, you know, it's a, you know, it's just but if people are part of that group, then then, you know, maybe they. And, you know, obviously we need to wait for everything to come to light, but. I feel like I'm missing some context. Well, if they're the, the leader of the Sisterhood of Skulls is very clearly out to um, destabilize governments and she was voted in given power by other members of that society, then they must support her. Now, not everybody necessarily is involved, but if you find out that your leadership is like that, I don't know that that's the best kind of society to stay in. Okay. So you agree? Um, I agree that that's a choice that people should be considering. What my issue is that um, that other people are kind of making that choice for them. Like young people, for example, join societies for all kinds of different reasons. Their parents were in them more. You know, they were invited by a relative or a friend or something, and so they're part of a society. But now they're, it seems like they're being punished, even though there's been no investigation. There's been no, you know, one person did some bad things, so everybody is at fault. And she, she leans over and puts her, puts her hand on your Nobody is saying that you're in trouble or that you're at fault for anything. Um, and then kind of leans in and like looks over like to the other students and says, your parents pressuring you to be part of this group. So the wheels kind of click, <laughs> click into a couple place. seconds and then she just suddenly goes. <laughs> you think that I'm part of that society? I'm not making any assumptions, dear. And you you can it is a secret society for a reason. You don't have to you know, your not name isn't on any register or anything like that. I'm just, you know, I'm here but, for you. But in the meeting last night that we were having, they were asked to self-identify so that they could be ejected from the meeting. Well, and just as a little meta thing, and obviously if. Antimony doesn't, you know, didn't actually get it. Uh, Antimony, sorry, uh, didn't actually get it. You know, it's like, or just not be a member of that secret society anymore. But yeah, uh, but yeah, she 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 does well. I mean, I mean, it's it's a it's it, it's a club, so it's a not necessarily school um, run thing. But you know, it is is a place where, and and this school is is where you learn to um deal with real world problems and and you know interactions with other people would it make a difference to you and how we react if i was a member of that society she, she like stiffens up a little bit no i would treat you exactly the same way as any of any of my other students but the way you're treating me now is very different from every other interaction you've ever had Previously, you hadn't walked out of a club because I'm trying to think of the right way. Yeah, you know, but basically, <laughs> you know, she, you know, there's, I know where that sentence is going, and there's no right way to say that. Right? Yeah, <laughs> um, because you may have been a member of, uh, you know, this society, and it made people nervous because, you know, at least in in my mind and uh, in Headmaster Chiron's, you know, uh, opinion. Any member, any good and upstanding member of society would probably want to at least distance themselves from what was going on there. And, and I agree that that's a decision that people in that situation should consider. I'm just not happy that 
they're being made to do that. That if you're revealed to be part of that society, that you're suddenly a different class of person. I think how yeah yeah I think she like I think she keeps pushing it and and you know you know basically says well if if you are considering that and I'm not saying that you are consider consider strongly because you know those people may be troublemakers and that might not be who you want to be with if I was a member of that society what would you be telling me to do now trying to think because and this ends up being more of a lore question because students you know do we think students have like full-on signed up for whatever you know membership kind of stuff or are they all like probationary members i imagine they're all going to be like we talked in like world creation that like classes are good and you learn things but like the connections and the like how you get ahead in life all come from your secret societies generally. Right. And so it's definitely the like join up so you can actually like get somewhere kind of thing. But yeah, I think she, um, yeah, I think actually she, she basically says, I'm not saying that if you were a member, but that you would need to leave, but it might, you know, uh, ask, ask some questions of, of the other members the 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 adult members and see what they're doing and what they know and and maybe look around to to see about you know joining up with some um more mm, reputable (laughs) secret societies which by default (laughs) i'm just saying as you've suggested that you know you consider the decision If I was a member and I chose to stay, what would happen then? Well, it is it is a secret society, and you know we would have no say in that, and you know we would continue to teach you as any other student. But I, I think that's the thing: is it's not a secret society anymore; it's just mostly a non-secret society. It feels like we're trying to root out anyone who wasn't on the published information. Out of character wise, I'm trying to think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But and yeah, Ash has it pretty pretty spot on. Um. But uh, in Twitch chat, I should say. Um. Hmm. Actually, I I think you know she she plays a little more diplomatically and says you know. I don't think anybody is trying to root anybody out so much as express a uh, uh, dislike of people who have uh, really should have kept her character sheet up because uh, she had such a good name. Calliope. Yeah, as Calliope's, uh, you know, intentions. Um, and I think that's all people are doing. It may turn out that the the Sisterhood of Skulls ends up uh, reforming and, you know, is a good force in, uh, you know, society. But when you come out with a, um, uh, anti, we're going to use the term anti sleeper and, um, uh, you know, platform that it doesn't look great. Which and I, I I will just remind Craig that is definitely one of their like stated goals. Mm-hmm. Um, like they're very, um, you know, <laughs> misandrist and anti sleeper and witches should rule the world. You know, kind of vibe. Genocidal anarchists. Sure. Love that. Yep. Good. Good vibes for some some bad folks. 
But and then, you know, and quickly realizing, like, you are asking some real questions and like prodding. And she's like, I am not prepared for this. I am not the school counselor. I'm here to turn things into other things. And she just, you know, pats yeah, like, you open this can of worms, you're yeah. going to eat them. <laughs> uh, yeah. And kind of pat, pats your pats your hand and just says, I'm just checking in with you and making sure that any decisions that you're thinking about regarding any kind of secret society, you're just thinking deep and, and hard and doing your research. OK. Thank you, dear. You can you can you can go be seated. <laughs> There's no way our group president came up with that paper. That was a prepared statement. He didn't do that on his own. Oh, yeah. No, he even said, I've been asked to read this. Yeah. No, and and, and Tony says that. Mm. Yeah. Um, and that definitely carries the scent of the administration. So I know you're trying to paint this in a certain light, but it just feels wrong. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think I think she yeah I, I think she disengages and realizes like there's there's nothing that she can say that won't get the school in trouble, and she's not paid enough to, <laughs> to get. Involved. So uh, Anthony, will you just go back to her desk and um, pack up her bag and walk up. <laughs> Uh oh, uh, where am I at? Uh, da, da, da. oh, right, classes. Because, <laughs> because there was a whole, there's a whole thing. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna get into the necropolis. We're gonna go dig around. We're gonna find real stuff. Oh no, hang on, we got in some drama. Uh, so over in history of magic, uh, which I imagine like seems like a really really fucking boring class, but. It's also like the excuse to bust out the um, like, oh, yeah, these historical spells. And we're going to, you know, uh, we're going to recreate, you know, this spell that such and such person used on such and such day to do this thing or that thing. And um, it ends up being like a step beyond like magic 101 and and steps into like. Yes, this is the class that you take so you can recreate these badass spells from history. Uh, I feel like it's also just like a lot of very important foundational baseline for anyone who wants to be involved in like wizard society at large. Like you need to know your history. You need to know these leaders and what happened here and then... Wizard civics. Wizard civics, yeah. So like a lot of people don't care it will never be necessary for them. Haley is here because there are expectations. Right. He's going to be a wizard president one day. Right. <laughs> the first female wizard president. I was yeah. playing with the wizard name generator trying to find who's the teacher of this. Mm -hmm. oh. Found Gaius Dupree, which I like. <laughs> Caius Dupree. Yeah. Uh, very uptight, snooty. Um, possibly actually has a British accent, but everybody knows he's not actually British. Uh, <laughs> he's got the, he's got the, like a mid Atlantic, like, oh, yeah, 1930s yeah, yeah. movie actor. Sort yeah. Of, like, that's even better. Um, and just like, all right, time to study. And like, <clears throat> because. It's 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 Ash. And so we're going there. And so it's the cool professor vibe, right? He leans against the desk and it's it's fucking he's all over again. Um, like, all right, let's let's put our history books down today. We need to talk about current politics <laughs> and we're not going to drag this discussion out more. Uh, but, you know, he starts talking about, you know, parallels to other times in history and different stuff like that. Um, it's like, oh my God, and especially at this point, cause it's been the whole day yesterday and into this, it's like, oh my God, this is all people are going to be talking about for like weeks. Um, 
and uh i think so contextualize it historically <laughs> right yep um and let's let's talk about you know how that you know how this is going to affect things based on what we've seen in the past and stuff like that where other you know secret societies have you know been overturned or you know revealed or you know whatever um when the white council was uh you know revealed and all of a sudden bad guys like started assassinating people and you know is it good that we have secret societies is it bad should you know should they all be disbanded you know should only government societies be allowed i feel like that's gonna turn into like a full-on the class divides up and then you have the debate back and forth exactly that class yeah um and uh is there anything specifically that uh, you want Haley to get in on in that class or any any further fluff to add to it? Um, no, more of just a a spirited debate. Cool. Um, so before we jump over to numerology, divination, um how 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 real is this class? <laughs> Or is this some like, because uh, I'm, I'm trying to find the, the class sheet. Um, yeah, seeing into the future, sharing your own visions and memories with them. OK, yeah, yeah. So we, we do treat this as like a totally real class. OK, yeah, actual. Yeah, yeah, cause I mean, Oracle is a, a trope you can be where like That's you actually right. yeah. have prophetic visions. Yeah. Um, yeah, just because like the spell casting doesn't quite support divination the way it works. So, yeah, well, I guess it would be reality breaking i guess yeah okay cool anyways uh yeah so uh because i think you're the only one who's taking divination yeah mm -hmm. so what what's divination class actually like look like um it is maybe there's a new professor this year and so he's changing it up how how the approach is to actually make it usable. Um, <laughs> it's like we get it. You all want to know about your future, but the oh okay here it is. He worked on Wall Street. <laughs> yep, and so he's just that like. Like in eighties business guy sort of vibe, very it's American like, psycho look to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and it's like, look, he's like subtly turning the class into how to get rich and stay rich using your magic. <laughs> like, there's there's a lot of kids who like signed up for the class just because they wanted to see the future and see what you know the year three thousand is going to look like, and all of a sudden right. this guy's like turned it into a business course. There's like uh, a white girl with dreadlocks, like sadly putting her tarot cards away. <laughs> He's like, yeah, no, no, no. You need you need more precision than that. You we, we, we need to bust out. Yeah. And like and he whips out like, no, no, listen, tarot cards are great. Like if you just want to get a vague idea of something in the future and you don't want like spoilers, but no, no, no. Now this baby and pulls out. A crystal ball, but it's not like a normal sized crystal ball. This is like this. Oh, baby! Yeah, it's the it's the you know sixty inch four K LED <laughs> top of the line model. He sets down on the desk, and everybody hears the desk go. Oh. <laughs> it's like now this <laughs> precise down to the second divinations, uh, like guaranteed. Blah blah. I was like, wait, are you selling me the crystal ball, or are we, <laughs> are we actually? <laughs> Um, but, uh, oh my God, there was something I was, oh, where I was going with that. Oh yeah. So, uh, he's got this big focus on like, get rich, stay rich kind of vibe. Um, but what is, uh, what is Priscilla in the class for? Um, or is it like required, required course or something? I think, uh, yeah, I think she's been disappointed in it because she was expecting the old class. Mm -hmm. uh, the like, you know, her 
dad's like friends with the old professor or whatever and so she was expecting that and there was like a last second change of staff and stuff like that um and uh but you know she's a good student so she's going along with it okay fine i guess i'll do this yeah yeah it's fine i mean it's interesting there's a lot to learn it's not what i wanted to learn but you know he doesn't assign that much homework so it doesn't take away from my potion studies so this this professor takes the magic out of divination (laughs) it's like no this should be cool and not not just um okay it's not technically insider trading yeah um cool um and yeah uh continuing on through our schedule my phone or my phone my mouse uh acting funny there we go um and then oh yeah numerology for uh yeah that is uh antimony um what is uh what's what's numerology because that numerology to me has always been a like divination thing so um partially but it's also recognized that numbers have power Mm. they can predict the future but also influence the future gotcha oh and it's and how they're used to understand the theoretical building blocks of magic. Cool. So this is like the magic blossom. physics. Yeah. yeah. Magic yeah. math. I don't know. <laughs> no. Yeah. no. That's a hard oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me. Uh, yeah. I, I, I drink it up. Uh, so yeah. Um, and you get, you have a vibe on that, that particular professor. Um, yes. Mm. When I was at university, there was a Dr. Trim who loved calculus. I mean, like fair, like super excited and very energetic the whole time. He had uh, like uh, 75 kids in his class or whatever. Um, but within the first week, the numbers of people that was standing room only, he would have like 150 people. And by the end of that second week, he knew all of their names as well. Because oh, because he was such an energetic teacher and he was great. So I think that's a, that's what this guy is. Just high energy. No, guys, really. I know this is super nerdy, but this is super. Oh, with the genuine love of of what he's teaching, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, I, I love that. And, you know, it's the underclass thing, and yeah, most are giving the you know the Ashen Chris response to, no, nah, no, nah, call it what you want. That's math, and we're not into it. <laughs> and then there's the few people like Antimony and probably a few other students who are like, oh, this explains so much. Like. I know that's how I was with calculus. I was like, oh, shit. OK, this is actually usable. Look, all I know is last year he showed a girl the time cube and she was never the same again. <laughs> oh, oh, what's, what's the, the time knife? OK, cool. Yeah, we, we can, yes, we, yes, we've all seen we've it. We've all seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, good place. Go watch it. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Uh, if you didn't watch the last right season now. because you were afraid, it's okay. Go watch the last season. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> I know. The the feels are there. <laughs> uh, met the time cube guy. Um, but uh, yeah, so numerology class compared to, especially after getting out of, you know, transfiguration. Um, like, yep, yeah, no, absolutely. Like the outside world does not matter. All that matters is math and numerology. And he's going through all sorts of, you know, different examples, equations, explaining how to, you know, balance the equation so that, you know, you don't actually have to sacrifice your arm when you're casting this type of spell or that type of spell. And, you know, just deep dive math and like so many underclassmen just glazed over and just not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the nodding off and it's like it's friday it's the last class uh for for many of them uh actually because it's the afternoon class it's after lunch like this is designed to send students to sleep and then there's a few who are like nah this makes my friday uh <laughs> i love that uh which means that uh you know after after that class like everybody because there's literally nothing else on the schedule. Um, and that's the end of class. Apparently class ends, uh, your school ends, uh, you know, Friday afternoon. There's no night classes or extracurriculars. So upperclassmen like head into town, hop on brooms. Underclassmen have to like 
schmooze to find an upperclassman who will take them. Uh, yeah, that whole thing. Yeah, I was specifically keeping my Friday open because like, that's the night you're going to go out. Yep. Um, Priscilla wants to find Haley. That's not difficult. Yeah, that's true. Is there is there an orbit of a flurry like, a flurry of activity around her, right? Yep. Um Hi Haley. Oh, hi. Question. Um, Does Haley remember Priscilla's name? Probably not, no. Like I will know who she is. Mm -hmm. Um Sorry to bother you. I know you have a lot of and like she's like a head shorter than everyone else. She's like, I, I know you've got a lot going on. Um, I was hoping to go out to the grove and get some potion ingredients. And um, we're supposed to have someone, at least an upperclassman with us. Because there um, is a man eating plant in there. And I've decided and, uh, that it uh, does have warning signs, but it still moves. Mm hmm. And um, and then like gets squished, and then like uh, I I didn't know who else to ask to help me. I don't have any friends. <laughs> I love the the rising, and then the. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> sure. It's totally what I wanted to do on my Friday night. It's just like, oh, this is sad. Okay. That's what I was going for. <laughs> now, here's the question. Was it what Priscilla was going for? Nope. <laughs> About right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can escort you. Yeah. The The idea of going to Chiron's Grove, like immediately all the other uh, other upperclassmen were, who would normally follow Haley anywhere and go do whatever Haley's doing. All of a sudden, everyone. Oh, that's right. I have to wash my hair. <laughs> it's just cleared. I was like, we we're all upperclassmen. We've been to the Grove. It's not that great. It's kind of great. But yeah, I initially had herbology on the schedule and then I realized there were actual classes and that wasn't one of them. Could have been. So, yeah. I feel like she she does greenhouse work. Yeah, because that's that's what I was going to bring up, um, especially if we do this long term, like, OK, who has a weekend job uh, around class? Yeah, you know, because we're clearly like we have dorms and stuff like that and we have the weekends off. So spending money is a thing. Um, and actually you talked about that, how yeah. upperclassmen kind of have jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that is a thing in the book uh, for spending money and stuff like that for us, because it's one job we don't care. But um uh, yeah that's definitely a thing and one of the perks to being an upperclassman um so yeah i feel like she she works with the grove yeah makes sense uh, uh, so yeah i'll i'll take you cool um so you guys head that way uh and uh i'm going to jump over to antimony real quick do we have a reason uh yeah to to you know bump into them or yeah, um, Antimony be illicit plants. Well, I think Antimony be like, uh, there's stairs with like the big, um, stone, uh, pillars with the stone rail and stuff, and she'd be sitting up cross legged up on top of one of those, just kind of like lost in thought, looks like petting her spider. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess for outside out of class, I probably have the cat, it could bond, it will be with me. And of course, they are magical familiars, so they're not just dumb, like, animals, mm -hmm. so they can totally, like, I, I believe it even calls out you can give them, because uh, you have a telepath, no, you do not have a telepathic link. You have a one-way telepathic link with them, right. so, like, you can tell them things, but they can't, like, talk to you. Right, there is still a, animals. there's a strength for it to be two-way. That's mm -hmm. what I was thinking. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. um, in, in the Philadelphia game, one of them was a librarian with a uh, mechanical owl. And I was like, oh, ah, yes, good. yes, I, yeah, oh, good. it was, it was very Ash. Um, <laughs> she, she, her wand was a ruler um, that she then also explained the metal blade flipped out like a switchblade. I was like, 
all right. <laughs> she hated she hated kids. It was the best character. Uh, I love the Perseus vibe with that too. That's mm-hmm. cool. Um, yeah. So you, yeah, and I, I will bring it up. So that does mean that you know uh, Priscilla, you see your not necessarily rival or hated enemy or anything like that, but there's that girl, you know, sitting up there. Well, especially, I think, especially after Thursday night walking out of Necropolis Club, and now she also walked out of Transfiguration. Like, and yes, now I'm a full blown. Like, I'm probably president of the local chapter by this point. <laughs> right. The uh, the under the bleacher weirdos are really into you by now. <laughs> well, at this point now, even the under bleacher weirdos are like, I don't know, she's. Oh yeah. Of- So it just like walks over and like looks over your shoulder. Neat um, spider. Bunny. That's his name. Oh, I was going to say I <laughs> be like it's was not. Pretty sure it's a spider. <laughs> um Do you have any plans tonight? I was just going to do some thinking, but I'm kind of chasing my tail there. Hmm. I could understand why you'd have a lot to think about. Right. (laughs) I'm just standing over here, like arms folded, looking at the lake. There's communication happening. (laughs) We're going to let this happen. (laughs) Do you want a grasshopper? Um, I'm okay. Wait. I'll take one for Bean. Okay. Those are like, the jar. I, I, I imagine, like, as if summoned, this little opossum hand this rises from the bag. <laughs> like, I'm not getting out. Like, I'm, no, I'm, I'm absolutely not. Uh, opens up the jar and that one flips out and she kind of makes a grab for it and then grab a grab and she finally catches it and then hands it over. Um, I heard what you said yesterday, and I don't appreciate it. I thought you should know. I'm sorry, I I need a little more context. You told her that I'm not deserving of attention, and that I'm not actually a star potion maker, or whatever it was you said. Oh, that's the only <laughs> the one with talent. That's that's the only subject that I really care about. So you could understand why that would be a hurtful thing to hear someone talk about me. I, I, it, it, mm. <laughs> but seeing as how you have a lot going on in your life, perhaps my concerns aren't that much of a big deal to you. And then like goes to walk away but there's like it's like giving you a chance right no but hang on no no that's not i i can see now looking back and playing over the conversation in my head that um my meaning wasn't clear to somebody had overheard i thought I, it wasn't about you at all I thought that it was unfair of the teacher to assign her to you instead of letting her do her own thing. And I was just trying to let her know that I saw that and to acknowledge that it happened. But it was also kind of unfair to you because you didn't get to do that thing on your own. I mean, I did. Right, but you had somebody there to support you, to uh, correct you if you were making a mistake or something. You didn't get to do that by yourself. I mean, she Just because Haley was my me. safety net doesn't mean I didn't walk the tightrope. But you would admit that walking a tightrope without a safety net is a very different experience to walking one when you know it's A there. very dangerous one. <laughs> We just had several students 
fall off the tightrope. Yeah, pretty severely injured when their things went bad, so. I know a sort of fly-by-night operation happens in your transfiguration class, but um, potions is supposed to be mm, orderly and neat. <laughs> orderly and neat, and Haley exemplifies that. I agree. So. I I appreciate that the two underclassmen are like, Haley's great. We like Haley. Now, I will accept that you had a different meaning from what you said and try to get past my hurt feeling. We're going to go look at the plants and get some ingredients for potions. I know it's not your best. Yes. I know it's not your best subject, but if you'd like to come and learn a bit with us, then I'd be happy to put forth that effort. A forest at night sounds lovely. It sounds scary. That's why I brought her. <laughs> it's um, fine. <laughs> you just need to know what to look for. Um, thank you. I accept invitation. Okay, well, let's go. And so I ended up babysitting. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, especially because like uh, Priscilla is close to your age. She's just a year younger, but she's just tiny. Yeah, but Antimony is you know several years younger than than both of you. Uh, but yeah, you guys make your way out of the school. Um, and follow there's a very clearly lit and you know path that leads out to the grove but then there's like a nice little archway and then a sign of like the height of the archway of warnings and rules and restrictions and like do not enter this area if you're pregnant do not you know <laughs> like just every possible like thing and it's one of those things that like everybody's been there where you have that weird sign. It's like, why is that sign there? It's because it happened at one point. You look at the list and you go, oh, damn. <laughs> like all these these terrible things that have happened or warnings or, you know, don't enter here uh, if you are currently suffering from a goblin hex. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you guys are clean and neat and free and fine. And so it's like, okay. Um, which leads into like the forest, which as you guys make your way in, the exterior looks like just regular old trees. But as soon as you cross the threshold, which clearly you realize the trees are basically just a fence system and inside it's absolutely batshit. Yes. A very long list of oddly specific warnings. That's exactly it. Thank you, Fox. Um, yeah. And, the, and, and just, they're so specific, you know, that there's an accident report. Right. In exactly. The file somewhere yep. with those exact Yeah. Um, yeah, once you step inside, it is batshit insane. Uh, the variety of things right f- next to the the front is like an inverted uh, like anti-grav plant that is growing down. The roots are growing up into the air and there's no dirt involved whatsoever. And it seems to be thriving just fine. It has these big, beautiful, you know, flowers and things like that. Um, you know, towards the the center uh, is where the man eating plant is supposed to be. Uh, but Haley is like, yeah, it's supposed to be. <laughs> so just everybody it, keep an eye out. Just keep an eye out. It moves. It's big. I think there's a, like a series of signs coming out in water and water circumferences. And like a, a couple of those are probably got like a slash of paint as somebody was yanked. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's um oh, yeah um and this is what familiars are good for <laughs> they can keep an eye out for you oh i see <laughs> oh we're not we're not feeding your familiars to the plant well i hope not <laughs> but you can't keep <laughs> an eye behind you hear that being your lookout <laughs> there is squeaks and shuffling in the bag that definitely sounds like being digging deeper into the bag <laughs> absolutely not yeah, at this point she's 
uh, basically got Ichabod like sitting on her shoulder. Proper Sphinx pose. Yep. Like I, I have this balance, please. Um, yep. What, what's the cashmere sweater look like today? Uh, he's a black Devon Rex, which are kind of like just kind of gray, right? Because mm-hmm. they're not really fully furred. Um, he's wearing like a dark blue. Also, I, I imagine that like Haley has a wardrobe and then Ichabod has a legitimate wardrobe. It's like, no, no, we can't wear the same sweater like twice in the same week. Are you kidding me? Twice in the same month. Uh, yeah. Um, Oh my gosh, actually. Oh yeah, Bunny. Um, I imagine Bunny though is like full defensive mode, like skittering across the her, her the back of her shoulders. But when they like stand. Yep. And I I got your back <laughs> kind of vibes. Um and occasionally up onto the head. And yeah. For for the two of you who are keeping a lookout, like Beam is not moving at all. Ichabod is just chilling. Meanwhile, Bunny is just like full energy. I am on defense mode. It's like, stop that. <laughs> Especially because I keep, see, see, keep seeing Chris react yeah. just at the thought no, of it. Fine. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, uh, apologies to anybody who has arachnophobia. I'll try and calm, <laughs> calm it down. Uh, but uh, yeah, you guys move in. And yeah, like I said, weird plants and not a one of them is the same you I, I guess you may occasionally find like oh here is a batch of like nine or ten that are like laid out in in a row but everything is set out um notably they're all labeled um and they're all in ancient greek um and it's just yeah yeah if you want to get anywhere with herbology in this class you got to take greek um or whip up a good translation spell um is there specifically any like ingredient that you're looking for, or is it just this is all just an excuse to come out to the grove? I mean, yeah, she probably has like a shopping list. Gotcha. More yeah. Or less. Right. Yeah. I, I, no, like, just... I, yeah. Like I, these are things I've been wanting to try, and you know, they, I have to, you have to source your own if you want to experiment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, school doesn't just give you out, you know, fire grass or whatever. Can I see your list? <laughs> yeah. okay and i'm just gonna start going down and just like i can tell you where this and this and this is these are out of season um the crop on this one is not going well so they're not not quality mm. next year's will probably be better if you want to wait or mm. source them elsewhere i see <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't deign to use poor quality cloud fruit to make my breath holding potion. So um Are you just the spamming the potion having... generator over there, Chris? No, that one was off the top. <laughs> I appreciate it. The Grove has been having some difficulties recently. Because hmm. Kyron has been Yeah, and everybody sickly. like mums up because oh we don't talk about the fact that Kyron's yeah. sick. Uh, so the yeah oh, we're not gonna so. say it but we're gonna mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know <laughs> uh which actually i think is perfect so yeah as you guys are walking through um <laughs> there is a there's a cough it's a very significant cough it's a cough that throughout the year i mean it's only the first three weeks but occasionally you have heard and, and everybody heard it on that first day when Kyron coughed and everyone kind of leaned back in their chairs going, what the fuck? Um, it's a big chesty cough, like two chests, uh, kind of cough. Um, and, uh, yeah, you, the, the three of you, you know, alone here in the, well, alone, (laughs) the three of you alone. Yeah. Uh, uh, find Kyron, uh, who I imagine is like, obviously a centaur but like actually wears normal human clothes for his human torso and then just has like a a, what do you say like a saddle blanket kind of thing across the back Mm -hmm. you know keep imagining like a tweed with a with a vest yes absolutely 100 percent. yes Mm -hmm. uh but notably has like old school like belt with a sword on right it was like that doesn't quite fit 
he pulls it off though. Like you can't, mm. you gotta, you gotta admit. Uh, yes, horse clothes. <laughs> um, cough, cough, and then uh, you know, lean and you know. I imagine you guys spot him at a distance as he he leans down. You can see little little pruning shears and stuff, and he is working away at a plant uh, of note and which may cause some alarm. Uh, Haley sees and recognizes the well, I'm sure you guys figure it out the second later. The man-eating plant uh comes stomping over and like you guys were probably expecting something in in your head and stuff like that. But when you see like the bright red white spot and it's got weird lips and it's like it's straight out of Mario. Did Hang on, which came first, the man-eating plant or the <laughs> Mario idea? Um, and well, yeah, there was top of horrors before that, yeah. right? That's true. Uh, well, I don't know when because when did Mario come out? Mario came out. When did Little Shop come out? Yeah. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> which came first? Yes. Thank you, chat. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's just like, oh, okay. Um, and sh- comes stomping full speed towards Chiron and then just pulls up short and like you see it like heft up like a big old like uprooted plant and hands it off to Chiron and Chiron does another cough, pats it on the head and like and then it just totters off like very proud of itself. <laughs> Little leaf feeties. Yes, exactly that. Yep. And just totters off. It's like, oh, OK, so there is one thing it won't eat, uh, which I then <laughs> appreciate it for everybody nodding, going, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Point uh, one seconds later, Priscilla yeah. is uncomfortably close. <laughs> Kevin kind of turns and like he doesn't like start at your sudden appearance. He just kind of nods as he keeps going. Hello, Priscilla. Good evening, headmaster. Mm-hmm. And Timoni, Haley, hello. Good master gives a curse. Hello, sir. And what are we um, uh, <clears throat> doing this evening? Uh, stocking up on some uh, potion ingredient. Mm-hmm. And you had to use my grove for it. And like, it's clearly like a teasing thing. Like, this is all mine. How dare you? You know, but it's. Clearly, well, it's clearly teasing for most people. <laughs> Was I not supposed to? Oh, child. Yes, no, you're 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 welcome. <laughs> like all of a sudden he like feels bad. <laughs> it's okay. no, uh, just you know, make sure that there's some left oh, for others. I see I see. <laughs> like a a very like nervous, uncomfy laugh where she just got the joke. It's like, oh, oh okay. yes. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, does she get it? Is it more like of a show than ha 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 ha? <laughs> I think, I think oh, Priscilla she gets yeah. it just like the second, like the second too late. Yep. Okay. Um, and mm-hmm. and is there anything actually interesting that you're making, or is it all just you know the normal stuff? Um. Well, I did see. Um, there was uh a witch that has purported to have um, be experimenting with some of the basis behind uh, the magic of the Thunderdome. Sort of uh, trying to recreate those uh, original spells. I know we've... In a potion. Well, yes. Curious. Well, I expect to report on that. I... Applied as a uh, like a paint or something. Um, well, you have a uh, you have assignment now. I expect a report on that in the next. You think you think you can pull that off in a week? I think so. <laughs> like he's like no way, but maybe. Uh, yeah. Oh well, then I expect a report on my desk in a week. I mean, most of her ideas are already sort of published, so I'd just be sort of recreating her test. So. Well, At least I should so, be able to do that so, in a week. Yeah, this weekend then. If that's what you wish for, yeah. Just, just take take a week. Like reach over and pass the shoulders like, man, this girl, I can't do anything. Um and uh <clears throat> okay, well that's good. Um Antimony, any luck speaking with the dead? 
No, sadly. And I fear my efforts have been set back a little. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Sorry. Da. Sorry. Uh, no. <laughs> Can't use these names because they're too close to Harry Potter or Into the West names. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, Gemma uh, talking about uh, Miss Indoba. Uh, you know, uh, Gemma <clears throat> mentioned that you uh, had had some opinions in class and then walked out of her class. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm just I have some trouble with how things are being handled. That's all. Mm, well, if you know, there is a suggestion box in the front lobby. So if you have some suggestions or uh, complaints, uh, you are welcome to bring them. I do read. <clears throat> I do read them all. Really? That yes. I. There was a rumor going around the classrooms that they just used that as a way to scry on who was the troublemakers. I mean, it's a bonus, but no, I do actually <laughs> read them. <laughs> okay. If if you have an actual real suggestion and complaint, I will definitely look into it. If, however, you are complaining that there is no soda in the bathrooms, uh, no. No, my concerns are a little more fundamental than that. That is what I had uh, had heard. Um, Haley, have have you been elected president yet? Still working on it, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First woman witch president. That's exact. But actually, let, let's put a pause for a moment here. Are we talking about president of the United States or president of the witch world? Or I feel like she's definitely going for wizard president. <laughs> Yes. First woman witch president. Prime minister. Mm, yes. Terrible. <laughs> it's all right. You spot the Obrimos. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, <clears throat> uh, well, uh, let, let, let's walk and talk. And he's like, for him, it's like clop, clop. And he's to the next one. You guys have a little, little short scurry. Um, and, uh, you know, starts, continues going on. You know, it turns out that um, I may only have a month or so to live. <clears throat> um, so, uh, you know, depending on how things go. Uh, I think it's safe to say after a couple of seconds, he realized he's is the only one walking now. Is that? We're all kind of like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just in their tracks. Like, so. Soon? I mean, depends on your definition of soon. I've, you know, well, for me, yes, it's very soon considering my entire lifespan. But uh, for you, I mean, a month is a good amount of time. N not generally. No. No. Oh, okay. Well, yes, uh, th then I guess soon. How do you know? What's wrong? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Sorry, Priscilla, you need to be paying attention better in divination class. Um, but, uh, as for the the what's wrong, that would Did be... Did you run out of money? Oh, I need to talk to that man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, if I, if I could discover what was wrong, um, then I would hopefully be able to cure myself. Uh, on the plus side, antimony... Uh, antimony, sorry. <laughs> um... And she's like about to. Before right. catches up. Yeah. yeah. Um, we may have to um, set up a code word and see if uh, see if you can speak to me after I've passed. Ooh. Right. I mean, if I'm going to do one last thing, or I don't know, maybe maybe I'll do <coughs> a lot of things. Um, oh, that one was wet. Um, if, uh, you know, do a lot of things in the afterlife, then, you know, at least one of them should be, you know, ring back to the school and, and confirm, hey, we can talk across <clears throat> into the underworld or Hades or good. That should be a last resort. I mean, yeah, what I mean, and like he he pulls like the belt to the side and he has a straight up like neon pink fanny pack. 
um, on the front of the belt. Uh, and you can see like it's open. It's got little, you know, little cuttings and planting and some little herbs picked and stuff like that. No, I'm, I'm not done fighting this thing. I just really wish it would reveal itself in divination so I could just get Is over this. Anything we can do to help? Um, well, unless you find a you know, magical cure for something that clearly only affects uh, centaurs because nobody else has got this. If this turns out to be centaur <clears throat> chicken pox, I'm going to be pissed. <clears throat> Excuse my language, ladies. But yeah, no, I'm I'm investigating and trying a couple different um, uh, restorative cures. And um, I mean, this is this is one of the is it the golden fleece? Heals any wound, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. If you know the golden fleece wanted to turn up, this would be a prime time, but uh nobody's seen that in like three or four centuries now. Um yeah. So yeah, we will uh continue a uh well self-diagnose, self-prescribed. Children, don't do this at home. Uh <laughs> Re regimen for for healing unless you're an immortal centaur <laughs> right. and i am already planning like my plan of attack on wizard internet because to be fair i don't think chiron is probably great at tech no dude no dude, dude is still so, wearing a fanny pack yeah i am i will okay, do this research for the you pack. they're back in fashion now that's true they are um Frogger has them. Uh, sorry, TV show. Anyways, uh, well, if if you think and like, th there's there's a little bit of not necessarily sarcasm, a little bit of star. If you think you can out research me, and then he kind of stops and goes, actually, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. If you you turn anything up, um, you know, we can definitely consider that extra credit towards. Um, um, I think he actually calls it ass class. Um, the school does it would never allow this. But yeah, you get <laughs> Kyron in, in, you know, a private conversation. He totally calls it ass class. Uh, we can definitely consider it uh, uh, extra credit towards ass. But. Yeah, I mean, the same thing goes for you, Priscilla, if you come up with some, you know, lovely little uh, potion somehow um i'm i'm willing to try most things just give me a detailed ingredient list before you ask me to drink it uh but yep you know, at this point uh you know month or so and my lungs will give out and then i just kind of fall over dead that would be unfortunate you are telling me and this wouldn't be an attack of some kind right it is um it is a thing I have considered. Um, the school and myself personally both have some uh, political and physical and mortal enemies um, that it would probably like to see me deposed or decomposed. Mm -hmm. See? Uh, uh, sorry. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, the admittedly source of the issue does seem to be uh, necromantic in origin, which does give me a little bit of pause considering what the school is built on. And it looks over to the, the school. And it's like, so there, you know, potentially is something buried beneath drums in the deep come for me. But, you know, uh, if if I do happen to pass, then, you know, I'm sure the next headmaster will be just fine to take care of the school. I have uh, several decades worth of rules, instructions and plans and backup plans. So, yeah, the, the school will be in, in, in fine shape. And don't worry, we are uh, financially solvent. Mm. So your education will continue even if I do not. Unless it kind of looks over at an antimony and gives a wink. But that's a last resort. 
Because that's more know. clearly conflicted. She's excited about the possibility, but also like it would suck. <laughs> right. But yeah. It is rather fortuitous that the three of you showed up here, but I mean, I guess it could be any other students. All of my students are brilliant. Like the eye roll is felt and audible. But yeah, go sent our dead principal. I think they everyone are, has and, their own talents, right? Yeah, they're all. We wouldn't have gotten into the school if not. Oh, no, I agree. Everybody is very talented. Brilliant, however, they not all are. Right. Oh, no, I think it's starting to affect my word processing center. That's a program, right? <laughs> Looks over at Haley. <laughs> Right. Well, see, I don't have any sort of a divination. I'm trying to see, like, can I do, mm -hmm. like, um, evaluation of him? Oh yeah, yeah. Because if nothing else, we should at least roll one spell <laughs> before we end the nights. I just yeah, noticed. I want to like. I guess. I'm trying to think of, like what it would be under. I mean, uh, just because divination is listed in the school as brains or oh shoot, I just moved off of it. Um, divination is listed as brains or grit, so it's it's very your mental kind of stuff. Um, um, but also could potentially be, um, hmm, what other class might it fall under? Um, I do know grit is a uh, reference also for defensive stuff um, and and protection kind of things. Yeah, I was liking um, like fight for that because it's about like holding off mm -hmm. and being in a magic. fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah especially because he's he is currently diseased. Uh, so yeah, let me jump over here to spell checks so um magnitude of effect um so your knowledge of what is affecting him probably bends the rules of reality uh well no i think it's just unnatural because it would it could happen just not naturally so just discovering something um the area of effect um well you are talking about bigger than a person uh, smaller than the classroom, so that's plus five. So we're up to eight. Duration, instant, just so that's a zero. So we're still at eight. And have you cast this before, uh, inspecting somebody's like health? No. Okay. Have you witnessed somebody do it? Maybe. Okay. Like probably, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you are looking for probably an... taking someone to the nurse at some point, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I was thinking. It was like I haven't tried to be a nurse before but like i've probably seen someone do it right so that brings us to a total of eight nope eight plus three eleven um and you are rolling uh fight yeah because i'm curious about it being um a disease or... magic yeah like a, a magic disease i dig it so that is a flat out uh for you d20 plus d4 Plus whatever fight bonuses you have. Plus two. Mm -hmm. Cause it's a magic roll, not a stat, right? Correct. Holy cow. Yup. Uh dun, 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 dun. so let me jump up here to so that's it's a 22. 22. 22. So it's 11 over. Jesus. Um, so um, 10 plus the character seems to cast a spell effortlessly. It looks like the character is just showing off like this. spell. Uh, like this is a spell the character could do in their sleep. The spell functions perfectly. Um, so, yeah, flashy showing off for the for the teacher. Um, and like, yeah, um, now. Uh, because A, it's the end of the uh, episode, and B, we can't just give it away. Yeah, you get the symptoms of what he's going through, and so, yeah, he's got, like, you know, <laughs> going to sound like 
the game of operation. He's got water on the lungs. And uh, yeah, there's basically a myriad of um, not necessarily organ failures that he's dealing with, um, but every single one of his organs seems to be performing at a less than uh, optimum level, um, which is probably the big red flag that it's something magical because it's yeah, attacking in the sense that this is like everything. a curse mm-hmm. or hex or something or like hex, that that yeah. is really just hampering everything and he doesn't appear to be healing like naturally like i imagine even with the spell especially plus 11 like there's a bruise he had where he accidentally bumped into a door that's just still there and it's not healing up uh so there's a whole bunch of stuff that seems to have accumulated and he's just not doing great um and he kind of looks down at you and gives you like the the great and the non like mm mm-hmm Okay, well, I don't know what's wrong, but I have some suspicions. I will research. I appreciate that. Um, I just wanted to try to charm my way into him saying more about ancient Greek folks or things and like try to like, not that she's going to be any good at it, I don't think like. Probably I want to fail this roll, but like, uh, you know, it'd be fun to roll it uh, to try and get like almost trick him into like revealing whether or not he is Chiron. Chiron. Roll it. Uh, yeah, this is this is definitely a uh, and this is a planned thing because you're not under a big uh, pressure, but it is going to be tough to actually get him to reveal the thing that he's never revealed before. Um, mm. I think let's go ahead and just call that a flat like. Uh, yeah, seventeen. So it's in that incredible and impressive, oh. nearly okay. guaranteed failure kind of thing. Sure, I'm gonna go ahead and roll my d6. <laughs> Can you get help? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, technically. <laughs> like, could I assist? Yeah, what you do is basically you are able to add adversity tokens yourself, um, as you are helping along. I don't think it'll help. <laughs> well, the thing, the cool thing is the roll happens, the bonuses are added, and then adversity tokens are spent. And because of the exploding die, it is possible. I got a two. You got a one. And then you have a plus one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'd save your adversity tokens. You get one, Priscilla, as... um get yeah. two. I'm easy going. Oh, nice. Yep. Well, it was worth a shot. Yep. Uh, which which is a very quickly shut I think down. She like, yeah, she like name drops like Thetis or something like that. It's like, do you think maybe Thetis is behind it after all these years trying to get revenge for losing Achilles? And, she, and he just looks down at you and says, good night, children. And like just bebops away. And like any any chance of chatting with him and having like dad moments just gone. Like, okay, I'm just gonna like sort of clap her on the shoulder. Like, time to go then. Yeah, I got what I came for. Well, not the last bit, but <laughs> it's okay. I didn't. We have we have a project. Oh, the gravity. Pa- oh no, sorry. Yes. Um... <laughs> take take care of Kyrid first, and then we can talk about gravity potions. Antimony? Mm-hmm. Why do you want to talk to the dead? Um, I, I hurt you, so I'll share this as a way to make amends. Oh. Um, uh, my mom is there, and I'm trying to talk to her. Well, I wish you the, I wish you good luck. Thanks. No, tromp back through an increasingly dark forest. <laughs> yep, and that is where we will end it. With. It's like, oh, oh no, don't ask that question. Oh well, nope, okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we we end with that oh sad moment for uh, 
for antimony. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I do think that we may bring this group back together because we've got everything created already. And yeah, we didn't uh, even get to meet Ralph's guy. Yes, mm -hmm. Ralph's faculty, which because we don't know exactly where it is, Ralph may just change his character so we can fit into this. Uh, but we didn't even get into the necropolis. Um, and yo, oh, yeah, so. Um, fun stuff. I love kids on brooms. It's so much fun. And you can do all sorts of wacky stuff like this, where I think we covered most of the the like high points, which is you get the you get the school drama, you get the like, ooh, something's actually like threatening people, um, all everything. And of course, you can develop your own, you know, magical society. Uh, have a lot of fun with it, because I can't even remember if we determined whether or not like I think we said magic was uh, was secret because we had the secret societies and stuff like that. But that was another little aspect to it too. So um, thank you all for joining us uh, next week. Uh, we will also be off because that will be Christmas Eve. And that's when my family does all our Christmas present opening stuff. And uh, I like you all, but you know, family. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. We didn't even get to ask class. <laughs> Yeah, I, that, I had thought about that. I was like, oh, cool. We'll just kind of flash over the weekend. And Chris is like, let's go to the Grove. I'm like, that's even cooler. Uh, so let's go do that. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is a lot of fun. Um, and I, again, recommend it. Like, they're not paying me or anything, but I highly suggest it. it's like 20 bucks on Drive Through RPG, which you could go to the affiliate link and that would actually throw us a couple dollars. Uh, the art in the book is also gorgeous. The art is very, very like, cool. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a, uh, it's a very nice book. And like I said, uh, you have seen literally all the mechanics other than combat, which is opposed roles. And then you come, you compare a, a, a chart. Uh, combat is literally one to two roles, depending on if you are fighting back or running away. Um, and uh, it is also kind of a gritty combat system in the fact that, like, if you are picking a fight with something well above your weight class, you can just die. Uh, the game is not shy about that, which is uh, a little spooky for somebody like me who has veils and lines around kids getting hurt. But um, hi, I'm the storyteller, so I have control over what happens there. So less concerned. Um, but otherwise, uh, thank you all. And if you're not on Discord, you should be. That's yeet into dot space. Um, great place to hang out. And it was very fun to explain to people at PAX, telling them, oh, yeah, just come join us at yeet into dot space. And I'm like, that's a URL. I said, yes, believe it or not, that is a real URL. And it does work. Um, if you want to support us monetarily, that's patreon.com slash occultist anonymous or staylucky.club, uh, which is also totally a real URL. Uh, and thank you, Perry, for making sure those are actually real URLs. Um, if uh, you're not on Discord and we don't see you before then, uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, actually, we will be playing on Christmas on New Year's Eve. Eve. Yeah. Um, New Year's Eve, not Christmas Eve. Thank you. Yes, New Year's Eve. Um, and so we will see you then for more Into the West shenanigans when we figure out, um, well, more about the not Inquisition. Um, see you all then. Bye. Bye. Bye.